It's time for Twig this week in Google. Gina and Jeff join us along with Kevin Marks, and it's just one big Google change log. We'll take a look at the Nexus 7, uh, Android 4.3, and most importantly, we'll analyze the impact of Google's new Chromecast device. It's all next on Twig. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twig. Bandwidth for This Week in Google is provided by CashFly. C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Twig, This Week in Google, episode 208, recorded July 24th, 2013. Chromecastic. This Week in Google is brought to you by LegalZoom.com. LegalZoom is not a law firm, but provides self-help services at your direction, like affordable business and personal documents you can trust. Visit LegalZoom.com and use the offer code TWIG to get $10 off at checkout. It's time for TWIG This Week in Google. And boy, Google handed us a, a lovely pile of steaming news stories. And so we'll have lots to talk about with Gina Trapani from SmarterWare.org. They did uh, the change log for me. Yeah. Like Chromecast. Massive so change log. Yeah. Yeah. Founding editor, life hacker, host of all about Android on this show, on this channel, uh, and uh, also of uh, uh, her show on 5x5, Five Five and just and a wonderful person. Also here, Jeff Jarvis, professor of uh, journalism at the City University of New York, author of What Would Google Do in Public Parts and blogger at Buzz Machine. Kevin Marks is also here. From Salesforce.com, he's also been at BT, at Apple, at Google. Guy he's can't keep a job. He's worked. I don't know the what guy cannot is. keep no a man. job. <laughs> and we have lots to say. I don't. Should we start with a change log? Is that probably the best thing to do, huh? Honestly, I I put a note in the rundown. No change log today. I mean, the whole media event. The show is like, the, the change, change log. log. Yes. Yeah, the show yes. is the change log. But I think we should probably talk about the announcement. We'll, we'll just. <laughs> I, thank you. I can't without the trumpets. I just can't. And yeah, no, it's not a complete show. It's not a show. Trumpets. Now, now we begin. So um, the, uh, the 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 event was billed as breakfast with Sundar Pichai, which is cute. Uh, didn't look too crowded. I saw the live stream, and I think probably all of us Lots watched the live stream. Lots of bacon. <laughs> was there bacon? Pictures of huge vats of bacon. <laughs> oh, I, uh, yeah. I, mean, um, I like bacon, but not huge vats of it. Um, did I didn't even get an invitation actually to this event? I don't know why not. Uh, but we did what we always do, and I think this is great. Google streams it live, so we can watch live. So Tom Merritt, I, as Actar, Sarah Lane, and I did sit and watch it live. In fact, you can catch that as one of our. Twitch specials. I think you can, you can watch this great moment where Leo starts on one product we'll talk about in a moment. Leo starts, uh, and he's growling about it, and he's going, I'll bet it doesn't do this. I'll bet it doesn't do that. And then it does everything he wants it to do, yeah. and it just turns around. Oh, well, it, it was it, it was a, it was an interesting product that suddenly became a must-have product. Yes. We could start we could start with that because I think uh, we'll, we'll talk about the Nexus that. Seven, but and and Jelly Bean Four Three. But really, let's kick the show off with a bang and talk about uh, this Chromecast. Which yeah, this stole the show. It did. Oh, last night on All About did. Android, we were talking about all the Nexus 7 specs had leaked. We kind of expected Android 4.3. We found some new stuff about Android 4.3. But the Chromecast was like, whoa, cool. It's <laughs> interesting. Kind of at the end of the event. They had yeah. no, they've had no secrecy on the Moto X. They've had no secrecy on the, uh, on the Nexus 7. Well, they have secrecy with you on the Moto X, but nowhere else. Nowhere else. else. Everybody else knows more about it than I do. But they, uh, we only started hearing about Chromecast yesterday because of some strings in Jelly Bean 4.3 that somebody yes. had uncovered. And so uh, this, is, this was unexpected. There have been rumors that there would be a new Google Q. And this is obviously it. It does have some of the features of the Google Q. Uh, but this is so much more. It uh, a, looks like a USB thumb drive, but it isn't exactly. It has an, an HDMI port at one end. So it requires a television or a playback device with HDMI. If you had an MHL port, I would presume it would get the power from that. But for most people, there's a USB port on the other side, on the fat blob end of the of the Chromecast, that you'd plug into the wall. Or if you're lucky enough to have a TV with a USB port, you could just plug it right into the TV with a USB port. And uh, this thing is remarkable. Now, at first I thought, oh, it's an Android stick. We've seen a few of those. Mm -hmm. uh, Roku even has a stick uh, somewhat like this. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not. What it's doing is very different. It's got Chrome in it. Chrome OS. 
And what happens is you aren't actually streaming to it as you are, for instance, when you use AirPlay on an Apple TV or DLNA with another device. You're instructing it from your tablet, from your iOS device, from your laptop. You're instructing it what to play, and it does the playing via Wi-Fi. Through Google's instructions. So now Google yeah. knows everything you choose to play. So this is where my concern lay, because the first thing they show is YouTube. And I think, oh, great, just what we need, a YouTube key. Well, which was the Nexus um, Q problem, which was it could only pull YouTube or, or Google Play. Right. And it stopped being able to pull right. Google right. Play. Yeah. So that was less compelling. And then they said, oh, and by the way, Netflix. Oh, okay. So they made a partnership with Netflix. Leo perked up at that moment. A little bit. But now I'm thinking, <laughs> yeah, a what, it's a shame, because what I'd really like it to do is play, say, Twit. Why should it just be the big boys? Why should it be Google's own property and Netflix, people that they can make deals with. And then they showed uh, Pandora. So, oh, okay. Pandora's coming later, by the way. And then they dropped the other shoe. And, by the way, any tab in your Chrome browser. So from now on, uh, when you go to a site, I guess, with pictures or other media, including your Google Plus photo album, there'll be a button in the browser. It looked like it was the browser address bar, yes? It's uh, to the right there's of it. a Chrome, Google Cast Chrome extension in the web store right now. Oh, it's an extension. Oh. Yeah, it looks. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's in the, oh, it's there now. Well, Ooh. let's let's install it's there it. There now. Is it the the sender or the receiver? The sender. It's yeah. The sender. Yeah, it's the sender. So because what that? The, there's a receiver. Well, well, the, the receiver the is the stuff. is the it's the, just the hardware, but I guess it could be. No, no, because there's a receiver API. If you look at the SDK, oh. API, it says you can develop a oh. receiver thing, and basically it just oh. looks like. You know, you know what that means? A, a half page of HTML. That means a, uh, any now. computer display could become a receiver. Yes. Or if I'm going to design a smart TV, cool. maybe I'm just going to say, screw it. Oh, yeah. And build in a receiver for Chromecast. Yeah. Why should I bother designing anything? So this has it, as, as Kevin said. It's, so you've looked at the API, Kevin? Yeah, I was just looking at that. They just released that. Um, there's a there's a blog post on it, and then there's there's the um, developers developers .google .com slash cast has the. So on the sender side, Leo, you can add this to Twitcast. Don't have to do anything. Our is. our viewers oh. would merely go to live.twit.tv, and if they've installed the Chrome plugin, they'd say send this tab. To the but then you room. get the whole yeah. tab. Don't you want to just send your player? Yeah, but the that's, that's, then you can do then you can do that separately. There's an SDK for that. Yeah. So we might want to slightly iOS, customize. SDK yes. for this. We yes. would. We would. We already. You know, for the third-party developers that do our apps on Android and iOS, I would expect them. You know, at some point to add that feature. Is it? Yep. Is it Kevin Marks? Is it WebRTC? How is it working? That's what is. That's what's not clear. That's what I was wondering. Um, I suspect oh, it's probably the same backend stuff as being is being used for the WebRTC, uh, which is you know the, the, the infrastructure in the, in the in Chrome for that because Chrome has that. And that lets you do video and audio capture, and also lets you do screen capturing. So I, uh, it's probably the, you know the similar plumbing, but a different uh, back end. And there's a you know there's a receiver.js thing that they they put up, but it's minified, so you can't really work out what it's doing. So, um, is YouTube built in WebRTC now? Yet. Kevin, is YouTube built in WebRTC now? Um, not quite the same thing. So right. WebRTC ha is a is like a is a technology stack. But part of the point of it is is to enable you to do peer to peer communication, so from right. um, one browser to another browser without having to go through a server except to poke the ports on the way through. Um, so I suspect they'll be using that that same model. Um, I haven't seen anyone say, say that it's WebRTC, but I, I, I'm, I'm assuming there's some there's, there's some overlap between the two there. Google Cast is a, this is from the developer page is a screen sharing technology, which is not how I would characterize it, by the way. That lets no, a, you're not really sharing your screen, right. you're instructing the screen. That lets a user send and control content like video from a small computing device like a phone, tablet, or laptop to a large display like a television. The sender may be a phone or laptop running Android or iOS. It might be a laptop running Chrome OS, Mac OS, or Windows. A sender application running on the sender device uses the Google Cast API appropriate to its operating system to discover and transmit to the receiver application running on the receiver device. They implied it was sending URLs. 
So, so here's yeah. my question. If you're logged into a site which requires credentials in order for you to watch a video stream, for example, or look at, at photos, and you send it to the Chromecast, which, as I understood it, was a totally separate instance, a different computer running Chrome OS, and I'm not logged into that site on the Chromecast, does it get Ooh. all my... I mean, is it able to play that protected content? It says device discovery, UX control, and credentials are handled on... Okay the sending device okay so all of my credentials and cookie so, so everything some that proxy. so it's actually a tab let me try this on you gina it's it's not acting like a separate instance it's almost acting like a tab on your chrome browser yeah so it does sound like remote control more like remote control well and and, well, and the chat room's saying and i think this is true that during the demo it showed a full page say of pictures from google plus but only the media was displayed on the big screen hmm you know, I have been sending YouTube videos to my TV for a long time, right? Google TV has had has had this icon uh, or has had this ability. Uh, the Nexus Q had this, right? But it was such a bad experience because right. I'd have to turn on my TV and I have to switch to the output or the input, which was the Google TV. I'd get right. YouTube loaded up on my phone and then I'd tap the like send to and it would take a few minutes and you see the spinny or whatever. It looks like the experience on Chromecast is way better. Chromecast yeah. actually turns your TV on, switches the, to the appropriate input, and then loads the... So it really does, and this is the point that you made in your post, Jeff, that I thought was so good, is that you can throw out your remote control, well, at least for internet and stuff, right? Like your, right. your phone or tablet becomes the, the remote, which I, which I right. really I mean, like. It's where it goes. The, the UI on a remote control is the stupidest thing on earth. Right. Right? This is, this is ridiculous. And every effort to to recreate yeah. this with a screen only makes it worse. Whereas now, if if I'm what it, what it really does is it turns the big TV into the second screen, the slave of your internet connected device. Yes. And which whatever is, you tell your Apple internet connected device to do, doing. Yeah. that's what the TV does, right? And so that's why you can control things, and then, and then the whole notion of the remote control then goes out for anything you watch that way. Right. And I would so you, imagine... It says you can pause, rewind, and play from your phone or whatever you started right. the playback with, but you can still get email. You can still do other things with the phone. Right. It's, again, it's like, to me, the way to think about it, I think, is it's just another tab. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a background process TV. on the phone? Right. It's unclear. The tab you don't see locally. You see the tab on your screen, and that tab operates in a certain way. Just oh, metaphorically, yeah, I don't mean that's the way I think about it. Yeah, because in in Chrome, each tab is a separate process anyway. So they've just right made the inner process communication work across devices. Yeah, that's an interesting way of thinking about it. So the the Google Cast extension lets you find and play content on your Chromecast device from your Chrome browser. When on cast optimized sites, that's a key phrase. Mm, that's where the that API is. comes in. That's why you want to optimize your stuff. Yeah, like YouTube yeah. and Netflix, you see new options. Okay. So mm, right. the site would so have to the, be cast aware and do to something. To get the full functionality. Do you you can full, replicate. No, I, think, I think there's there's more than one page. way of doing this. Um, I, haven't, I didn't watch the whole demo, but I think there is a screen sharing model, but there is also a pull model, which is um, rather than share this, pull it directly from the source, um, which is... You know, that was the only thing they had on the queue, which meant that if you wanted to watch a YouTube, you, it had to, it then had to pull it from there, and you were, you were trying to remote control it with your phone. Um, but the, 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 I think the difference is, is shifting this from Android-based to Chrome-based gives them much more flexibility because Chrome runs on much more things. Um, so the, the queue was Chrome was Android-based, which means you could only control oh, Android devices. Oh, really good point, Kevin, and, th and thus the Sundar, right, Uber. Where, Whereas, you know, the, the point of this is they've explicitly said this already runs on iOS, Android, and anything that runs Chrome. But the other piece that's in the SDK is you can create receivers, and it looks like you can run a receiver on anything that runs Chrome, which means you could run it on your Mac, or you could run it on a Chromebox, or, you know, um, anything else that happens to have Chrome built for it, Windows 8, whatever. So that's... Um, that that's interesting. That's basically saying, okay, we're taking advantage of the, of the web platform part of this rather than the Android bit. And I suppose that means once that version of Chrome gets caught up on Android, you could have an Android device as a receiver too. Wow. 
Yeah, right. that makes a lot of sense. That, that, I mean, that struck me. It was the thing that struck me the hardest was that this was a Chrome OS device. That that kind of yeah. came out of left field for me. And, and, you know, if the Chromecast is successful, and how could it not be at 35 bucks and people are buying, you know, three, four at a time? It's already sold out. won't ship till, till August 7th if you place your order now. Um, if this is successful, this means that it's that that the Chromecast will have beaten out two Android-based set-top, more than two, but Google TV and the Nexus Q, right? I mean, right. Kind of, but, it's, but, but I would have never thought I wanted the web on my TV in that way. And this is what this is, right? The web on your TV, which was the promise of Google TV, right? This was the Google TV selling point. You get the web on your TV. Any tab you can open on your computer, you can open on your TV. That was the theory. But the implementation was... Uh, fell short, right? Because ABC.com said, "Oh no, we, you know, would, you know, we we'll block content and 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 so forth." So you really couldn't get the content that you wanted to watch on your TV this way, right? And that I, was a question you discussed in the coverage, Leo. Is there any? Uh, uh, I, there's no way to block this, is there? Uh, well, yes. Uh, and we, so we were talking about user agent, and uh, does it have a different user agent? Presumably, the Chromecast would say, "I'm a Chromecast." And the reason it doesn't I have to, say it's of course. Chrome OS. Well, it's but the Chrome. reason it would say it's Chromecast is because Google's trying to make deals with these content providers. They're not going to, they're not going to uh, intentionally bypass. No, they don't want to screw Hulu as much as you. We would like them to screw Hulu. Um, I'm not sure that's true. I think you know, I think what happened before was they they tried that went down that path. That was Google TV, right? Um, and Google and they got you know shut down because what they were trying to do was too much they were trying to actually take over the interface between you and the cable box yes um they were trying to commodify searching across the different program delivery models which is a very now they've done that by bypassing the cable box no no because they will control the cable box too so what they're down now doing is saying okay it's just a web device it's that's it, what i'm saying you can already it, it, do this in effect it bypasses. you can already attach attach hdmi out to your computer and plug it into the tv um you know um Mark Shuttleworth just launched his own version variant of a phone that, that does this. That it's a it's a phone that um, runs Ubuntu, but if you plug it into the TV, it becomes a computer. This is this is you know, this is a commodified thing, um, and it's it's going to be hard to you know, prevent you doing that. You know, I right. well, let me let me now, maybe this will make it. My cable so I can take over the. Let's, this will make TV it clear. Switch. This is from the developer page. Developing a receiver app. So this is what the Chromecast device does, and any receiver app you'd want to do. Applications running on the Google Cast receiver device are always web applications. They are launched onto, on the device after it receives instructions from the sender application to do so. A Chrome browser on the receiver downloads the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and renders it. A persistent connection between the sender and receiver is then created, and a command yeah. channel is opened. So that's how we maintain the relationship. But the playing is all done on the Google Cast. Yeah, right. Uh, the API exposes the ability to transmit commands between the sender and receiver, provides structured ways of passing common media functions like play, pause, stop, and volume, but also allows for app-specific freeform messages to be transmitted. Wow, that's nice. Oh, that is nice. Authentication can be handled, for example, by requesting an auth token from the sender application using these freeform messages. The API exposes status methods, which allow the receiver to push its status to the sender application. I can't get a signal. Whatever. Okay. As well as to respond to explicit requests for status. Universal remote controls built into Chrome and Android use this status to display and provide basic pause, play, and volume controls. Um, hold on, hold on. Right this now. is, you know, I have to say, controls? already the coverage from a lot of outlets is it's another Apple TV. It isn't. It's not a Roku. No. It, is no. it is a completely unique implementation that I Apple should have done this. Well, I this is out of left field. I don't know if anybody's really thought about this. Well, um, it's, it's pretty awesome. It's something that's been sort of latent in the um, implications of WebRTC because the point there is it lets you construct um, browser to browser communication. So that's something that um, has been you know people have talked about that in that community, but that's you know that's still a that was still a oh well who's going to deploy this question until like this. I think this is pushing that um, front and center and saying, well, we've got a little thing that will create a, a browser window on any attached television, and you can um, remote so, control it from your, your gadgets. It's and awesome. It's, 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 it's freaking a very brilliant. Nice thing. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a question for you. I, I didn't see anything mentioned with this. What about games in this? Well, anything you could play in a Chrome browser, you could play on your TV. Yeah, but I'm, I'm reminded of, yes, of I.O. Yeah. where we saw the five devices together and the car racing. Yeah. You know, I think them. the issue is that this probably doesn't have a very heavy processor in it. 
Well, I'm assuming mm. it's got... Um, it's Raspberry Pi-like. Yeah, Look, got, what is a Raspberry Pi? 35 bucks. I'm it's got, you know, if, in order to play 1080p video, you've got to have a reasonable size processor. Right. Raspberry Pi can play 1080p. Yeah. So I would think it's something along those lines. Right. Right? Uh, and, and it's interesting. The price is the same. But but I'm I'm thinking about something different here. I, I I'm trying to go to the idea that well that that's your... it's germane because the the thing that's doing the rendering is the receiver is the is well, the I, I, Chromecast. Right. So yeah, that doesn't I, have I, enough I power that. to render. I guess you could do server side rendering, but that's well, what I'm saying, Leo, is, is a different question. Remember how at I/O they had the way that you could have five different mm -hmm. devices, five different Android devices, suddenly doing the same game. So now imagine you have three friends with you at home. And you each have an Android phone, and you're playing, and you're using your phones as your controllers for a single game on the big screen. I think this allows that. Next step. It's not not not, not as presently. Oh, you'd have to have server side rendering, like a Gaikai kind of. Okay, that's what I'm asking. All right. Right, or on live, because you, who's doing the rendering? It has to be a, a third party, and not the Chromecast, because it doesn't have enough juice to do that. Um, Got it. Okay. It, apparently, WebRTC is supported. So what you you could also do is use your phone as a camera. I don't know. Right, and, and broadcast and, it. and your television as your receiver. Sure, I mean, but they, which is basically what Apple's doing with um, uh, what do they call it? AirPlay. So AirPlay is basically just capturing your um, screen and sending it over as as well. That's video. that's the point. Is this is completely not DLNA or AirPlay? Right. Those are taking but, but the screen you that could, you're holding and putting and it on your TV. But you could do that with, with, with WebRTC. WebRTC has to right. to do that. And that's why I'm saying this is important because in this case, it isn't, a, it isn't a, a, a mirror of what's on my iPad or even an extended desktop or anything like that. It is the, the tablet is controlling a device which is rendering the video. That, yeah. that Chromecast device is doing the work. So it's not AirPlay at all. Um, it is very different from AirPlay, and it's a very interesting kind of um, concept. And it, it, you know what really is? It's it's. Somebody said this on Twitter, and I think this is exactly what we're going to see more and more of. We 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 always think of the computer as monolithic, or even I remember asking Paul at Alini at Intel, what happens to the computer? And this was years ago in this post PC world, and he said, well, well you always need the hub. You know, you'll always need the smart brain and then the yeah, thin clients. No, Google's the hub. And what we're now seeing is really that what you're really doing is distributing processing power everywhere. And you're having interoperative uh, intercommunications. And different things do different things. So this Chromecast isn't good at a lot of things. But one thing it can do is put a 1080p picture on your screen. And you control it from another device. There is no hub. And yes, Google's the hub in this one sense. And this was Tom Merritt's observation this morning. What is Google's uh, percentage in this? Because they're probably selling this thing at cost. They get to see everything everybody does on TV. Oh, there's <laughs> there's that, and and I think so much more, Leo. This is what I try to go into: is is that is that imagine what this does? I mean, this allows Google. Uh, there's so many possibilities, right? Google Play. Second run to Apple. Now suddenly you're motivated to buy your shows and buy your movies and buy that stuff here because you can watch them on any damn device, including your big TV. One, two, um, yeah, YouTube. YouTube is trying to get all these new channels and figure all this stuff out. YouTube is also going to go to a subscription-based model for some stuff, so it becomes the place where where channels and shows go. Three, you're right. Google is going to be able to watch so much of know so much of what you watch. That becomes an incredible advertising opportunity. And Google moves past just web ads to video ads, which are a higher value. And if they're targeted video ads, they're explosively higher value. Four or five, I don't know where I am. The more they know, um, the better. Uh, I think, that I, I don't know whether Google's getting a spiff, a sales spiff off Netflix for the number of subscriptions it's going to sell. I wouldn't be surprised if it does. Well, they get a three month free of Netflix, twenty four dollar value, and you're sourced, and so you're sourced. They know where the new new deals yeah. come from, and so I'm, right. I wouldn't be surprised at all. If, so Google ends up getting into a whole new revenue stream here beyond advertising of subscriptions, and right. not only selling its own subs, but selling others subs, becoming an agent for sales. Actually, if you Compare think about it, yes, yeah. they probably they're, they're probably they're, 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 they could sell us at a, at a loss because they probably make enough money on oh. each new Netcast subscriber. 
to exactly. to support the entire exactly. enterprise. Yeah, so they're going to uh, and of now money they can this. they can become the agent, right? So look at the you know, what was the model for Apple? Apple wants to and what's the model for Amazon? Right? right. They want to sell everybody's content. Right. Well, Google uh, also wants to be in the advertising business and the sales business, and now it's in both with this. This just puts them in the middle. This works with Google Play. So if you rent or buy stuff from Google Play Store, you'll be able to watch it through this. By the way, just a quick note, and thanks to the chat room, Amazon does have this uh, for Prime, free shipping, $35, ships in one to two days. So wow. if you haven't ordered this yet, uh, well. and it looks like Amazon says it has stock, ships from and sold by Amazon. So I guess it maybe is friendly. They obviously gave you know 20,000 units or whatever to Amazon. Um, I did buy another one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm up to five. <laughs> uh, Lisa, Lisa, he's on crack. Uh, no, I think I'm done. Well, she's going to get She, she. You're not going to get any complaints on her. She's going to get one. Uh, they're going to be all over the place. There could be a couple in the studio. So what do I um, the other the thing Netflix, this does for Google uh, is it becomes, sorry, Gina. No, no, I was, I was just going to say that the Netflix deal, the three months the free, that's also for existing customers. It is? Yes. You're kidding. Oh, well, now I'm really saving bucks. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but how are, yeah, uh, uh, Farhad uh, posted this. That's what? Like, I find that hard to believe. I do too. Uh, da, da, da. Well, oh, Farhad just tweeted that earlier, and I'm saying offer valid for previous new and existing Netflix. Holy camoly. Wow. So now it's an $11. It costs $11. So now I'm trying to find where it says that on the Google page. He was. <laughs> It's in the small print, says Jen Coco. It, it must be in the, in the... Yep. But that's, I mean... <laughs> now, well, I just got 15 months free. I'm buying three more. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 your, it's your Google Ponzi scheme. Uh, so what's wrong with this? Why would you... I mean, for crying out loud, if I'm a, a smart TV maker, I'm just immediately removing all the guts of my crappy smart TV apps... They won't because they make money on it. They put ads on it and everything. But, you know, you might as well support it, support it built into the TV, right? Um, Apple TV, does that look like a, at 99 bucks, at, at three times the cost? Crappy deal. Does it look like a good deal? There are channels you, can, you can't get on uh, this that you can get on Apple TV, although how long that lasts, I don't know. Like what? Well, well, yeah, Sky TV, HBO. Crunchy Roll, HBO Go. There's a few things. No, but I think the thing is that Apple TV does something different and more complicated because it works as a standalone box. It has its own remote. You can just use it on its own to watch things. Right. Um, and that has pluses and minuses. Uh, I've had stuff where I try and watch it on the Apple TV and Netflix coughs and splutters, and then I, I try it on the Mac Mini and attach the same TV, and it works. So there's, you know, there's, there's, there's trade-offs there. But um, that, that, I think that's the thing. This is Instead of saying that this is a standalone device, they're saying this is a special thing just for moving the web around between devices and the assumption is you have something else to row control it which you know apple tv is nicer when you're using an an iphone or an ipad to control it or, or an ipod um, than that little um, four button widget but you they still had to make it work with the four button widget um so i i, I they're, they're, set, they're taking the the nicer ux part of apple tv and just just doing that part so that's a, here's the issue for apple i think i think that apple's model is so much built around selling content Google's model is built around discovery of the whole web. And this is built on that, right? I can watch anything on video on the web. I can watch with this. Apple wants to sell you their stuff. And it's, 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 it's always in a closed world. And that's where I think it's a brilliant move because it exploits that. Um, I'm not completely convinced because I think Ap Apple's selling content business is not a huge part of their business. I mean, it's something that's grown. Um, but they've, they've mostly done those deals where they're, they're not making a lot of turn on that. Um, and, you know, the Apple TV has YouTube as, on it as well and, and other integrations of, of web stuff. Right, but, right, but Kevin, I think, I think when it, when oh, it comes down, what we, when, another fringe benefit of Google knowing what we watch is Google's recommendations to us, Google and fake Google now, are going to become extremely powerful. And recommendations from anywhere, it doesn't matter. Google's going to find benefit in that. I don't think Apple is built to find benefit in that. Selling right. devices at a loss for Apple? Not so much. Apple TV. Now you're going to buy a special TV that works just with Apple. When why would you be limited that way? No, I, don't no, know. You know, I, I still think that's a myth. There's not, Apple is not going to ship a TV set. That's that's bonkers and never made any sense. But I think the other thing about this is um, 
third parties are going to make clones of this because it just how just runs Chrome OS, which is already available, um, and it and it said it'll stick with still lots of sticks that are available that already on Android. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if there are third party versions of this within you know uh, a month or so. Um, and Google will be quite happy about that because they want more of them to do oh, this. Because yeah. from their what point else of view, could it do? You think another outlet for the web? Yeah. Oh, so you could ah okay. So here's a question for you. So you could then, Leo, put in a more powerful processor. You could do oh, yeah. a deluxe version of you this. You could make your P your PC could be a receiver. So does that become, I'm going to go back to the game thing. Then fine, does that go back to uh, the idea of that, number one? Number two, um, uh, conference room communication? Well, somebody um, suggested in our chat room they're going to put this on their keychain, and that makes a lot of sense. That does oh, make a lot of sense. Hotels? Yeah, hotels? you said it on your post, Jeff. Like, your keys this is something you travel with. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. except, except, I, except I realize, you know, now, it has to have Wi-Fi into the cloud directly. Yes. Ah, right. there's right. a disadvantage. Right. Well, that's not a problem. You just bring your little router with you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you have a hot spot. <laughs> so I was, All right, I was but let's, this, let's go down some of the trip. company's implications. Hmm? So I was, I was on this road trip where I was taking my son to visit universities. Um, and at Cambridge, we only had wired internet, so I went and bought a, a Wi-Fi box. And then carried that around with us and plugged it in, in the whole, in the hotel so that we, we had. So rather than like individually attach our, our eight whatever devices we have between us to the Wi-Fi, we could just attach the one thing and then use that. I've tried that, Kevin, and some hotels uh, uh, nix that. They managed to blo block that. Yeah. Because they, they, they look at the MAC addresses. Um, oh. No, I, so they limit the, the number of the devices. The ones I used worked, but yeah. Cheaper hotels. Okay. All right. Worked in, worked in Hyatt, worked in um, uh, Club, what's it? Uh, the Howard Johnson didn't have a wired connection, didn't have you work with Wi Fi either. <laughs> oh, cheaper hotels always have better internet than the expensive hotels. Isn't that weird? Well, the, well it's because they're made well, of wooden, so they can put Wi Fi. They're made of wood. Yeah. <laughs> they're, not made of concrete. <laughs> they're made of sticks. No, I had this Help great me out here. With the and guys about this, and they said it, it's really hard for our expensive hotels because they're really well built. And yeah. They've got thick walls oh. and we can't yeah, you don't want it to be well built. Things. Whereas well, the, that's why the they charge us 20 they're, pounds they're made a day. Out of, you know, chipboard, and you can just chuck a few base stations in. Help me out here in terms of the kind of impact on the rest of the industry, all right? Um, you know, that's what I try to do when I went through this, but, and, and what interests me is the whole of media industry. Various oligopolies in TV have been declared dead multiple times, and they're, and they're not. They're still around. They're still smart. Um, if, you're, if you're Comcast, what are you saying today? Um, hmm. Well, I'm not sure if this makes a lot of difference from Comcast, from, from people watching stuff on their laptops or, or, or tablets. Well, or it, does it, or it improves cable, it's cable snipping. It's um, yet one it, yeah, more to way to snip my cable. Oh, yeah, it's good for cord cutters. It what is, it, yeah. The people who are really excited about this, I think, are content creators. I think that's the most excited. I think, I think channels as bundlers... And cable companies as bundlers of bundles, they're they're hurt by this. I think cable content creators are helped, though though it's going to be very hard to find their audiences. And gosh, who can help with that? But Google. Um, uh, so yeah, I think content creators should be happy that that they can hope they can have more direct relationships with their audiences. They can know who those audiences are. Getting rid of middlemen in terms of revenue. Getting rid of middlemen in terms of data. That's the good news. The bad news is. There's no easy path to find a built-in audience or somebody to write a check to make you to make the show. You got to make the show and go to the risk yourself. Right. Mm. Um, Amazon. Yes. What does Amazon think of this? Um, I mean, this is it this depends. Is another way to watch video. Amazon Instant. Yeah. I can't watch Amazon Instant on my Android devices. Right. Which is one reason I don't you use can't it. watch it on your Apple TV either. Can't watch your Apple right. TV either, yeah. Yeah, so, so it's just, just an easy way to watch, able to watch Amazon Instant. This, I think. Yeah. I have to try and see, but I assume yeah. it would work with this. The Google TV Amazon Instant app, quote unquote, just brings you to the website and like loads a loads, you know, a, a, a browser and it's kind of slow and stuttery. Uh, if Chromecast is a little smoother, a bit, uh, smoother um, experience, then this is great for Amazon. Just means more so people Amazon are selling stuff. it, is that an indication that Amazon sees this as friendly and um, that they, they're going to use the API for, their, for that stuff? And, and it'll just like I, 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 I don't own a Kindle, but I read Kindle constantly on my Nexus 7. 
same thing. We don't care what device you use. We'd like it to sell you a device, but we don't really care. Yeah, I no, think so. Just, I would be surprised be if right Amazon, Amazon didn't enable cast enable their their instant uh, streaming content. I'd be really surprised. surprised. Why wouldn't they? they? Shipped an Android app yet? That's the bit that puzzles me. Yeah, it's true. They haven't. All right, Hulu. I know why they they haven't. I know why. I know. I know. Remember how long it took <laughs> Netflix? Remember Netflix didn't have an Android app for a long time. DRM. DRM. Yeah. Which oh. is which mm -hmm. is what they changed in in Jelly Bean. Guess right? what's in Jelly Bean? Yeah, four point three. They said they got new DRM hooks, which may you know. And so that's a like a licensing implication issue. It's yeah. like you you got to placate whoever you're licensing the content. Exactly. Yeah. It was fascinating too. The Google presented that as a way to get higher quality video. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, but they couldn't get 1080p from it's Netflix. True. Wouldn't give them 1080p, true. so it's true. All right, Hulu. Hulu's in it, it, the problem is Hulu's in a flux. It's a moving target because the, the uh, ownership uh, is an, up in the air. Well, now they've said they're going to hold on. I know, and they don't, they, but they still don't agree on it, what kind of service Hulu should be. Right. Uh, Hulu notoriously blocked Google TV. Right. 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 Uh, and I and now that now that I understand that you have to as a web page enable Chromecast, I think you could pretty much. Uh, it, that's Google's way of saying yeah, and you don't you don't have to look at the user agent, just don't turn it on. So well, you I, don't have to enable it, right? You, I, mean, I can yeah, still you, put a web page. You can on send my... the, the tab. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's the, that's the question. So you okay? Yeah. yeah you put a web page just on How do you send a tab? You just use, using this Chrome extension. No, I don't. I I got the impression the Chrome extension doesn't do anything. So watch. Well, I don't have. You can unfortunately, put a web page on this. I thought if you can put a web page on it, then you. I can don't put think you can. No cost device is found. Well, maybe Got my rolled. Amazon one will come Friday, like it says it's supposed to, and then I can try it. And so I'll let you know. <laughs> Well, you can also cast any of your tabs in Chrome to your TV, letting you enjoy sites, yeah. photos, or even videos oh. on the best screen in your home. Oh. Yeah. Note that this feature is still in beta and requires a fast computer and a Wi-Fi network. Okay. So you should be able to go to abc.com, cbs.com, or whatever, and, and even if they it. haven't cast enabled, just say, hey, wow. send, send that tab to, to my TV, wow. which is awesome. You're going to yeah. see it on the page as part of the page. Which means, which means you're actually doing it the painful way. You're doing it like air, the air yeah. page. Yeah. Sending where right. it's actually compressing your screen at 720p and sending it over the wire to the. Oh, to is the it? Oh, TV. I thought it was, it's not yeah, reopening yeah. the address. On, no, it says Google you have account? to have fast, et cetera, et cetera. That sounds to yeah, me no. like yes. Oh. It says tab protection quality standard 480p high 720p extreme 720p high bit rate. Yeah. So basically, the the maximum they're going to digitize it and compress it at is 720p. So it's not ideal. So it's not okay. Know, it's, it's not going to you know it's not going to make give you the full resolution of your your Chrome Pixel on the screen, but it's going to give you a, a representation of it. It'll work. All right, all right. Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm getting this Presentations so, and so, PowerPoints. Um, it probably wouldn't be great for watching video because you're then decoding and re-encoding and it'll look a bit scabby. I'm sure Google Docs PowerPoints my will work well. again. Yeah, winter is coming, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> I want this thing weddings. now. I want this thing now. I cannot wait to watch House of Cards on this. I was like, I... When they when they started playing the music, I was like, "Oh my God, bye, bye, bye." <laughs> you may not you may not publicly distribute or ship your Google Cast application without written permission from Google. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, in order to be a writer, sender, or receiver, you have to have an app, an app approved by Google. So there there is a there, they do have process. a hook there. They have a veto hook. Um. So I guess what we would do is go to the app developers for Twit, for instance, and say, hey, you want to put this plug-in in? It'd be great. Because then somebody could launch the app. I guess. I don't know how this would work. Launch the app. Yeah. Yep. Launch on, the app, and then there'd just be a new button. And there'd be a button on the app that says, send it to my Google Cast. And then yeah. it would just show up on the TV, and you'd only see the video. You wouldn't see the, the, exactly. the widgets. Yeah, and same thing on the web. I mean, on the web, it's going to be a lot easier, right? I'm sure it's just a snippet of JavaScript or whatever. Uh, yeah. If it's and the if, Android, it's the native Android or iOS app, they're going to have to download the SDK and fig find a place to put the button, da, 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 but it shouldn't be that big a deal. If I'm Pocket or uh, there's a lot of apps that this would behoove you to enable, uh, I'm, you know, the whole class of apps that would allow you to aggregate videos. You can aggregate video into Pocket right now and then... Push a button and just watch your videos on your TV. Oh, yeah. It would make my to-watch queue yeah. a lot more fun to watch. Yeah. 
So the button on the right. Chrome browser appears just as all the other buttons do. If you have uh, Chrome on some devices, that you get a lineup of buttons. Uh, on a, on the uh, Chrome OS, you know, you get the drop down, and so there's there's the Chromecast button right here. Huh. It's just huh. I installed it on my Chromebook, and it's just appeared on my desktop Chrome as well. That's one of the things I love about extensions. Okay, well, that's kind of cool. Well, I kind of love it, and sometimes it's really annoying. It's like, no, actually, I don't right. want that. Right. Yeah. I put a bind on uh, on my browser that here, Twitter, and it's on that everything. That Twitter reading extension I put on the the Chromebook yeah. has now appeared on my Mac, and it's like, no, you're chewing up too much CPU. Go. You away. can control that though, can't you? Maybe. That seems to be like there's a way to. I don't know. Maybe not. That would be I'll, a good I tip for somebody to, to tell us. Show, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Gina. Classic. My my standard question: Does this uh, what 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 is what wheels does this turn in your developer mind? Anything? Uh, you know this. I have been fighting with Google TV for so long that I'm like just so excited to unplug that thing <laughs> and, <laughs> and and get to watch the stuff that I want to watch on my TV. This didn't really, you know, I have to say I haven't had a chance to really look at the API yet. Uh, you know, the app that I build obviously doesn't have the kind of media. You know, you're not going to no. want to throw your to do list onto the onto the TV. That makes no sense. Uh, so it didn't it didn't really get the developer in me going, but it definitely got the TV lover in me going. <laughs> I'm pretty I'm, I'm just excited about I want to see that this user experience, uh, you know, how fast it is, how 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 well it goes, who's going to block it, who's not, who's going to enable it, who isn't. Um, I uh, I mean, I'm excited. I think I mean, I cover Android and all about Android every week and I'm ex and, and I, so I'm a big Android enthusiast. I'm I'm kind of a little bit bummed for Android a little bit that that Chrome became the thing that that sort of, you know, became or, or at least it looks to me is going to be the device. The Chrome OS is going to be, the, be the, is going to be the operating system that powers the device that makes TV watching better. Uh, but now it all kind of makes sense that the fact that Google TV was putting the web on your TV, this also this this Chromecast is putting the web on your TV. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm pro web, of course. I like that it's open, that anybody can enable it, that it works on everything. It just makes a lot of sense. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think I think still 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 processing uh, otherwise. On that, on that point, I saw somebody a week ago uh, speculating that maybe even on, on our on our Google Plus group or someplace that um, Chrome may be, may may win the day here, and Android may become a subset run by Chrome. No, I I couldn't understand that. I didn't get any sense out of that. No, yeah, Android's I mean, a full <laughs> operating system, and yeah. by well, the Chrome way, OS supports Chrome. Operating. Right, Chrome runs on Android, right? Android does right, not so run on Chrome. Way around. That's, what I, that's why I couldn't figure it out. Chrome is a full OS, and um, no, I think they're symbiotic. I thought it was very interesting at first. But I thought OS this is an OS. I mean, you know, right? Yeah, that's an OS with one app. Right. <laughs> right. And well, and, and we, every app apps. can run as a web app. Right, and, and plus invent, all the web apps. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's one app. You can you can't install arbitrary apps on Chrome OS. You can install Chrome on it, and then. Whatever Chrome will do, you can do. Right. Chrome, in a way, in that sense, is the OS, isn't it? Yeah. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Actually. <laughs> uh, so it was interesting because when Sundar, when Sundar came out, he talked about Android and Chrome. And I thought, you mean Android and Chrome OS? But really, Chrome is the... Chrome is the OS, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, in a sense, the Chromebook is just a... a, a, a rendition of that a demonstration of that of the power of the of the browser so this is so let somebody in the chat room said how is this better than apple uh airplay it's just different than airplay it's different i think it's better it's more flexible it has airplay features but airplay is deprecated really the idea of taking what's on your screen here and putting on your big screen tv that's what airplay does well airplay is two things so airplay is a, a stream sending API, and then later they added the um, AirPlay mirroring, is what they call the right. grabbing the screen and sending it. So it was originally... But in both cases, was, isn't the content coming from your Mac to the TV? Yes. Yes. It, and it, it, and it, that's what's a, so different push, about this. You're not pushing content... Yeah, yes. You're, you're yes. not pushing content to the Google Cast. The Google Cast is getting the content on its own. You're you're just op you're sending a message to the Google Cast in most cases, saying I want you to play this content and let's establish a link so that I can control your playback. I, yeah. I have a way of saying stop, forward, back, that kind of thing, volume. Uh, but the Google Cast is doing the work. That's very different than AirPlay. It does have an For airplay like screen mirroring feature. So I can take an arbitrary Chrome tab, compress it, send it over to the Google Cast, and it will play it.
But that seems like that's deprecated almost. That's the that's the last thing you'd want to do. This is so DNLA, AirPlay is just a fancy version of DLNA. DLNA and AirPlay are really ways that a device can put their content on the on the screen wirelessly. It's a wireless transmission protocol. This is not that. No. And that's why this is interesting because this is instead of the thin client server relationship, this is the CPU everywhere concept. Yes. Which is you CPUs are there's smart devices everywhere and you're interoperating. Nobody's in charge. You're interoperating. Yeah. And okay, I so love this because I think in the long run, this is where we're going. This is the future. So yeah. how do you how yeah. do you tie Agree. this in then to the Internet of Things, right? So so if if you've now attached a computer to your TV, now go to your car and to your refrigerator and to your washer and dryer. Does this does this yield any kind of indication about the architecture of how that could operate? Or yes, right? exactly the yeah. same thing. I I bet right. you the and I don't know uh, maybe some maybe Gina or Kevin would like to look at the API. I wonder how abstracted it is. Um, does it have? It sounds like it's completely abstracted. That it it is mere, what it really is is a way of uh, interop uh, two devices to communicate. It's a way to talk. I wonder if so. It's I like could do this in my car. I could go into my car. And plug in a little dongle, and if make all the stuff mine. Board, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So push like let's put push this podcast to my car radio, that kind of thing. But not, yeah, and I that think it's nice. I think it's even more abstracted than than uh, content. Yeah. Yes. Because what you're yeah. really doing, really all you're doing is you're sending a message to a device. In this case, say play this content from this URL, but really you're sending a message to a device, establishing a control. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, conversation so, so i don't know you'd have to look at how abstract the api is but at a sufficient level of abstraction it's not about content it's about whatever yeah and then i mean I once you go, get sensor sensors involved it can be right. things like it when it gets hot in that room turn the fan yeah. on or whatever so that, it's raspberry that, that, pi it, well so that your analogy before leo is not bad it's, it really it's a is raspberry a raspberry pi, pi yeah. yeah so for instance your smart washing machine under you know it's it's object oriented programming your smart washing machine understands a certain set of commands and so instead of saying play this video, you say wash these clothes, and then establish a link so that when it's done, you tell me it's done. If you want me to pause, I could pause it from my phone and that kind of thing. That's this. If it's at that level of abstraction, they've invented something much more interesting. Could could I put this OS on Raspberry Pi? I don't know. Are you asking me for it? Has <laughs> anyone put a Chromium to Raspberry Pi? That's the question. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Linux so is on Raspberry Pi, right? So anything you can do there, now you can start to be rethinking. The only this. reason I use Raspberry Pi is that is a device roughly $30, $35. Yeah, yeah. That is a full computer, has memory, has an operating system, uh, has storage, you know, all of that stuff. So the abstraction goes to two levels. The abstraction goes to a display level and a command level. But don't use the word display. Okay. An execution am I am level. I wrong? Am I oh, giving okay. this too so much? There's an execution level and a, and, and a command there's, yeah, level. Yeah, there's a control level. That's, that's, you know, that's, that's in the spec. This yeah. is what Zigbee, this is what Z-Wave do. This is what home automation systems do, right? Yeah. And, okay, this is crazy, but what if Google's creating back in a back door into a home automation system? That's not yeah. that's not crazy. No, not um, right. I mean, uh, who is that? Who is that exact? Who um, Andy Rubin isn't Andy Rubin? Uh, oh, Andy Rubin back. At, yes, he's all into this, isn't he? Yeah, this is his thing, uh, right? I remember uh, Android at home, and uh, they've shown this kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so someone on Twitter, Greg Norman, said, uh, it seems like the Chrome-Android differences are becoming clearer. Android is an operating system, and Chrome is a platform for interoper interoperability. Oh, uh, exactly. Which I think is a is a is a pretty good distinction. I mean, I think we nerds all try to fig try to figure out, you know, what what's Android's role versus Chrome, you know, Chrome's role, and and the more they blur the lines, uh, the more we start to try to figure out what's gonna, you know, is one gonna beat out the other? Can these two things coexist? Is there a tension between them? Uh, that was kind of my fixation about this whole know. this this whole announcement. I all, mean, who, yeah, I don't all know. All operating systems are platforms. That's what an operating system is. Right, <laughs> right. Right. But this this pushing this pushing and pulling the promoting the cloud print this this idea that that Chrome is uh, you know that you install an extension and it installs everywhere that it's a push pull that it's aware and all tied to your Google account. I mean, it really does feel more like a platform for interoperability more than more than anything. I mean, Android has some of those characteristics, uh, but but 
Leo, I don't think you're taking it too far with the the, the Internet of Things, uh, in, which Jeff brought up originally. I don't think that this the API in its current incarnation uh, is you know necessarily generic enough or addresses these things. But no, I don't. I don't think that you're going. Too I would far. note that the API is not called Chromecast; it's called Google Cast. Google Cast. I noticed Ooh. that too. Right. So it so it sounds like. It's bigger than that product, than the Chromecast product. Right. Or maybe they just want to distinguish the API from the hardware. Well, imagine, too. Just, just said the Chromecast API. I mean, I don't know. They do say Google Cast is a screen sharing technology. But I just think it's uh, it could, it could be abstracted as something. Huh? That's a subset of what I can do. Right. Right? That, that's, yeah. Well, but, you know, I, I imagine now, I, see, I go to a lot of places where they use Apple to, to just, you know, cast their screen up on the, on the big screen. Take this now into the business environment with WebRTC, with all this stuff, and imagine how you change the idea of a shared screen in a space yeah. and what you can do with that. Right? You can, in a classroom, anybody can, can, can share something on, on something that you can now use WebRTC and communicate across things. Then the next thing that gets me interested is, can I remote? So, so now I'm, I'm controlling actions on a local screen. What about controlling actions on a on a remote screen or a remote device? That's where the Internet of Things comes in, but that also becomes very interesting. And geofencing, which is, is now built in uh, into hardware uh, on the new droids in this X8 processor that they're using. Right. Um, imagine that as you walk through a mall, the screens change, the displays on the screen change to welcome you. Because it's aware of your device. It can see you. You're talking oh, to it. Oh, okay. Right, right. Okay, so one of the important technologies here is just that notion of awareness. When you yes. turn on your device, it, 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 it immediately senses the Chromecast and says, you want to talk to that? That's a, Well, and that's what's happening in the Chromecast extension right now. It says, no cast devices found. Right. So that's, that's, so that's really powerful. Yeah. So now there are Chromecast devices freaking everywhere. They're in your hotel room. They're on the airplane in the seat in front of you. They're in Whoa, the, the oh, I love that. Rooms. Wait a minute. That's right. Who <laughs> The airplane, mm. the airline no longer has to provide content of any kind. There's just going to be a screen with Chromecast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is this we say about the cars. This is, you know, my wife just got a new car. Um, and so it became my job to try and connect everything to it. It's a major pain in the neck. <laughs> you basically have to download and install apps and right. um, the car's doing its own voice recognition. I'm, and I'm just sitting there going, I just want this phone to connect to that screen and to that microphone, and then I'll be done. But I can't do that. I have to go through an, an entire other OS running on the car, which is really annoying. Um, so, yeah, I, I can see this making much more sense you know, down the line, down another product cycle of the car manufacturer, where you know you just have a way to send stuff to the car. Now, Apple has been pushing something like that. They've, they've made some announcements. iOS 7 um, does along that. Along those lines. I, yeah. iOS 7 stuff. Yeah. Um, and they will have it that baked into some manufacturers. But it's the same problem as, like, baking in the iPod connector. Um, you have this problem that, oh, we have this great connector that you can, you can plug iPods into, except even Apple doesn't make those anymore. Um, and so you are stuck with this connector in your car. You've got to, like, daisy right. chain dongles into to attach other things right. to. I also see great hacks for it. I can imagine somebody hacking a Times Square giant display with one of these things <laughs> and from the street. <laughs> as long as they can get it, your messages. Stick it in the HDMI uh, port. In the HDMI <laughs> yeah. port. Yeah, because I bet it has one in the back. Well, just, get, just get around plugging things to H uh, HDMI ports and bars and just taking over the screen. It'll be fun. Well, that's good. I like that. Well, anyway, so uh, it's clear that the, <laughs> that the surprise, the stealth part of this announcement was something completely unexpected. It was this uh, Chromecast device, $35.00. Again, the tip is go to Amazon. It looks like you can buy it and get it Friday. I mean, uh, basically, a, a USB stick upstaged a new version of Android and a new <laughs> Nexus 7. Think about that. Yeah. <laughs> a little stick with the Chrome logo. Just, just it's cool. Both well, of the other, the other two major announcements. It's cool. It there's, is cool. There's something about it I just like. I only wish HDMI were powered. So you wouldn't have to plug in the darn USB. Well, it is. Some, some variants of it are, I think. It is. Oh, really? You need an MHL port, and uh, that's... Oh. It was an interesting choice on Google's part. So the Roku stick uh, gets its power from the uh, HDMI port, but you have to have this oh. special kind of MHL port. Which some some TVs are starting to ship now. Uh, I have it on They're my Onkyo more. receiver, so I plug it in there, and it's powered. Um, and I think I would be I'd be very curious to see if there is MHL support built into this. Um, they may not have mentioned it, uh, but what if it did? Because I mean, it would be nice not to have to plug in the USB 
power as well. It may also be a need of more power than MHL would provide. I'm not sure what the uh, that's a that's a good point. Power specs. It is a computer for after all. It is a computer. Yeah. Um, very interesting. Very interesting. Poor Android. That was fun. Yeah. That was lots of fun. We're going to take a break. Come back. That was uh, part one. There's more. Nexus 7, Jelly Bean 4.3, and uh, I suppose there's also some news. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> chat, room, chat room keeps telling me, so I will say this. A power dongle is provided with the Chromecast device. Uh, but you don't need it because it's a micro USB port, so anything you probably have about 800 of those cables and power adapters lying around. It's the same thing that powers all the smartphones and so forth. Um, yeah, now the Amazon order for Chromecast is ship is this is July 30th, so I guess Amazon sold out of them too. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, do you know whether they did they give away these things at the event? Uh, they didn't mention yes. anything, did they? That's yes. why they cut off the signal so fast. Yeah, Danny, Danny, Danny Sullivan was saying, "Oh, I've got one with me. I can plug oh, it into the TV." Oh, now I'm mad. We should have gone. Yeah, I, oh, I, I put on the rundown. There were there was some uh, I, unboxing of both the um, uh, Chromecast. Because yeah, there are the lots of seven. questions. There are lots of questions. Uh, about uh, you know we, what exactly is this? How exactly does this work? Yeah, yeah. Look, there you go. It's a box. We did. Did anybody here get an invitation to this event? Nope. No. No, I didn't either. What are we doing wrong? It's called this week in Google. It's very strange. <laughs> very strange. Plug it, it in. Good. Switch input. Well, I guess that's the so it doesn't switch the input. input. Somebody was no. saying it turns on the TV and switches the input. Doesn't I think I think Leo Nuttall's set up. That's to get it set up. Oh, just to get it set up? Mm. Maybe. I don't know. I don't think most TVs... Well, wait a minute. No, there are some TVs that you can control the TV from the... Uh, uh, they did talk about I this. I thought that they, said, they had said that the during the, the announcement. You need to have a TV it, with that capability, on. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not all, not all TVs. You have to have C, what's called CEC. There's most, also most new TVs. Most new TVs have CMC, CEC. Well, uh, new as in like last couple of years? Yeah. Mm. You, mm. You're look. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're going to want to buy a new TV. <laughs> so my second yeah. TV. For this $35 my device. Expensive old TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you're a TV manufacturer, go back to them. If you're a TV manufacturer, if you're, if you're, if you're a so Samsung and Sony... Are you building this thing in? Well, I, I mentioned that. I mean, I think that they make money on their smart TV products. I, you know, my uh, Panasonic Viera has advertising <laughs> playing back yeah, yeah, and so forth. Uh, they probably also do uh, license deals. I know we, uh, Samsung approached us and said, uh, for a small percentage of your total revenue, we'd be glad to include huh. your app in the Samsung TVs in Europe. And we said, no, thank you. Well, what are, right, let me ask you the question a different way, Leo. What happens to the manufacturers who are still pumping out Google TV TVs? They're gone, right? What what, it, what does happen to Google TV? Is it uh, is it dead? It's dead, right? It's a di it's a very different thing. I mean, it's not. Yeah. It doesn't do the same thing at all. Right. Uh, for it, one it thing, it is. But the, the cell was the web on your TV, yeah. and what do you need? Google this is TV what this for? is. Yeah. What do you need? Yeah. It for? yeah. 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 One well, of the they, advantages they, yeah. of Google TV is you didn't need a separate HDMI port. You, it was a pass-through device, so you just plug your cable box into it and then in, into the TV. But uh, right. But then you had to have like a keyboard as a remote control and a whole bunch of weird stuff. Yeah. No, this is so far superior. Uh, Andy in his chat in the chat room says, "My three-year-old Samsung has CEC. He okay. in fact controls it with XBMC on his Raspberry Pi." <laughs> <laughs> now that's showing there off. There you go. Humble that is brag. Show geek. Uh, it's been part of the spec since HDMI 1.2, so it, it's fairly common. Okay. Uh, I know all, I know all of the TVs that I, I think all my TVs have it. Yeah, maybe my oldest one does not. I think my oldest one does not. Welcome. Let's get you set up and watching. So this is if you go to the website. Thanks for downloading the app. Verify, install, run. Where did you find this, Chad? Is this on? So on the unboxing video, there they was a URL. Yeah, there was a URL that's uh, so go to google.com slash Chromecast slash setup. Yeah, so and you would do this on your device as opposed to. Uh, Does this mean that TV? I can like seriously airplay my computer screen? <laughs> Wait a minute, what's going on? There's a there's an app called Chromecast. Yeah. I what the hey? Uh, on, 
a Mac um, a Mac app? What yeah, Mac this, app? Is, this is a Mac app. A Mac yes. app. Yes. What? I know, I what? know. Work. What's that? Um, let that, me well, I mean, go ahead and run it's it. It's certainly in the API that anything can be a sender. You don't or receiver. Yeah. Rather. They they emphasize that this is works on iOS. No, but this is a Mac app. So, so hang on, where did you download that from? Oh and, no, you still want the oh. Chromecast? What? It's looking for your. Chromecast. It's looking for the Chromecast. So this is an app that runs on the Macintosh that lets you talk to the Chromecast, as opposed to the Google Chrome extension. So this would be in lieu of an extension. You could do both, obviously. So there's a Windows app and a Mac app as well. The What's sender, the we thought the sender would be Chrome, but it's not just Chrome. Right. And it's interesting. Uh, it looks like if you have a USB on your TV, you yeah, can use that, that. and that's what I that's oh. what I will do because I do have a USB. It's right now. It's charging the unused anything, 3D you know. glasses. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll just take those off. Talk about a dead technology. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but they're charged uh, in case I ever want to watch. What's the security on this one? If if you know the the, the old porn question, so somebody comes into the room and they want to stream porn to your TV. They How do you own your Wi-Fi network? So that's what it is. Okay, all right. It just depends. Is it good porn? No, they could be on it. Well, oh, I see. No, Go they don't, Kevin. Google TV developers on Google Did Plus with the it, exciting yeah, news Wi about Chromecast. We're getting a lot of questions, mostly wondering if Google TV is dead. No. In fact, partners are continuing to launch new Google TV-enabled HD TVs and boxes. LG, right, had Google TV built in. As we announced at I.O., we're working with partners to bring the latest experience of Android and Chrome to devices later this year. We believe there is ample room for both products to exist and succeed. That's from the Google TV group. Yeah, okay, what's, what's, your, what's your countdown? How long before <laughs> the announcement that Google TV is dead? I give it I mean, six have months. They, have they got more users than Google Reader? <laughs> <laughs> at the rate at which Google's cutting products, the fact that they didn't uh, sunset Google TV That's yet interesting. makes They've me got think. Contracts out they got contracts They got deals. They got deals with LG deals. and other manufacturers. They've got to keep supporting it. They They've can't. got to do it gently. Yeah. Gently. Gently. <laughs> gently. Do not if want they're basically, to they're going to want, they want those the guys to say, okay, fine, we want to be releasing this contract so we can use this other thing instead. All right, we're going to talk about the Retina iPad. I mean, the Retina Nexus 7 in just a second. But first, a word from LegalZoom.com. LegalZoom is not a law firm, but founded by lawyers about 12 years ago to help people get legal work done. It doesn't require a lawyer. Turns out there's lots of things you can do, from wills to LLCs that are just paperwork. You just fill out a form, check boxes, and you've got it. That's how Twit was started. Very simple. Cost me $99 at LegalZoom.com to form an LLC or an S-Corp or a C-Corp. Your trademark protection starts at $169. Your last will and testament, $69. This is very easy. I Take it from me. I'm a nitwit, and I was able to go through the steps and answer all the questions, and boom, you got the documents. You got the legal paperwork. You're protected, and I, I it's, it's such a great thing. It really democratizes... Uh, uh, this kind of stuff. And it's great for startups, for people who want to protect a brand. You know, if you've got a blog that you've been doing for a few years, that that's your brand. Don't don't let that uh, go up for grabs. you got to keep that. By the way, the one thing they've added since I used them is uh, you can now go and get a uh, advice from an actual lawyer. They have the LegalZoom legal plan, pre-negotiated flat rate fees with attorneys in nearly every state. You can see the unedited reviews of the attorneys, their profiles, so pick the right one for you. Uh, that's just part of the total service provided by LegalZoom.com. When you use the offer code TWIG, you can take 10 bucks off. So that means a will for $59. There's no reason not to have a will now. Really. LegalZoom.com. Find out why uh, more than, so they've been in business 12 years, 2 million Americans in that time have used LegalZoom for LLCs, wills, trusts, and more. LegalZoom.com. Please do me a favor. Use the offer code TWIG. We'll get credit, and you'll get 10 bucks off. So the Nexus 7, now I, I resurrected my old Nexus 7. What the, this was an amazing deal. 200 bucks for a 1280 by 800 tablet. Um, in over the, uh, it's about a year old, over the uh, months. It's, you know, I've got all the apps on here I want. I have to say, in the early days of Android tablets, back when we were running Ice Cream Sandwich, 
Um, it was not pleasant. Pleasant. It wasn't. It wasn't. In fact, even before that, what was the first tablet operating system? Uh, it was. It was Honeycomb. a uh, the, Honeycomb. Honeycomb. Yeah. Yeah. Honeycraft. And, and there was a, there was a tablet before that, the uh, the Samsung Galaxy Tab, which I had, but it was an awkward affair. But that. But in a few. Or they remember the Zoom Motorola Zoom. But in a few oh, years, Zoom. literally, in just a few years, uh, not only has the tablet come of age, but I gotta wonder why anybody would buy an iPad. Um, you know, somebody was saying, well, there's oh, no... Oh, boy, are you going to get the comments? That's but a big statement. I'm, I'm serious now. I'm, I'm really sincere. So this is $229 for the new Nexus 7. It's Retina. Apple said, oh, we can't do Retina uh, and give you good battery life uh, or a reasonable price in a 7-inch. Uh, well, Google can somehow, magically. Uh, they claim 9 hours watching HD movies, 10-hour battery life, good battery life, great screen. Um They've claimed a big improvement in both a processor speed and a 4x improvement in GPU speed. They're going to need it to push all those pixels. Um, I, you know, something's weird has happened with the Nexus 7, also manufactured by ASUS, the original one, is it's gotten a little sluggish over time. I don't know if have you noticed that, Jeff? It's just it's, no, I don't. I don't I don't maybe it's so. just, I don't know. Maybe it's the new OS. Uh, maybe I don't know. But but what what I have noticed is absolute app parity. There is no reason to think that you're giving up anything yes. moving from an iPad to so an Android you tablet. Were giving up, yeah. You were giving up Netflix, but no more. Right. right? Um, I, you know, I'm looking at all the apps I use. They're all there. One thing people say, oh, well, there, there aren't as many tablet-specific apps. A, I'm not sure that's true. But B, uh, Android scales oh. smaller apps much better than the iPhone. The iPhone apps yeah. on an iPad are ugly. They bring up an iPhone mm -hmm. keyboard. Uh, they're scaled. Now, that's going to be a little bit better in iOS 7, the scaling anyway, but they'll still bring up an iPhone keyboard. Not so well, on this Android. Is, so this is, I read a huge rant about this um, just before the Apple Developer Conference, which is that um, there's still this weird fragmentation on iOS where you either write an iPhone app or an iPad app. Right. And you kind of pretend that there are only two screen sizes. Um, and then they launch the iPad mini, but they didn't change anything. So right. you, you're either running the I, iPhone app doubled up um, or you're running the iPad app shrunk down, and either way, the buttons are the wrong size. I mean, it's exactly what Steve Jobs said, you have to file your fingers down, because if you're running the, the iPad app and the iPad mini, all the buttons are just that, you know, half the size that they were on the, uh, as designed. And that's, that's, a, that's a structural problem, I guess. Now, I think they're going to fix that with 7. A lot of what they've said on 7 is... Well, they're going to fix the resolution issues, but they're still going to have a phone keyboard on there. Which I think is a is a bad thing. I haven't. I haven't, the mini? I, haven't yeah. I haven't seen seven running on a on a. On I've been yet. told I don't have it, of course, because I didn't sign the NDA. But uh, those who have used it say, no, no, it doesn't change the keyboard. It's the same bad it, iPhone keyboard. And I does, also argue yeah, that, that, that they may that, fix that. But but the thing is, maybe. what they are doing in seven is they are changing the layout engine, encouraging you to rewrite your apps so you get the uh, shiny new layout possibilities and variable size fonts and things, and that will give them the ability to create different size screens. Well, need, needless to say, let me, for instance, this is an app that's uh, called Glide. It's very, just suddenly got became very popular. Uh, on the I, iPhone to iPad, it'll scale. It's ugly. There isn't an Android tablet version. However, the scaling is great. It works just fine. It looks good. The fonts look good. It's totally usable. I don't have a 2X button. If yeah. I want a keyboard, I have a keyboard that, that is completely normal. Um, I, you know, I, I, I don't understand. I think this, to answer the question, <laughs> they do a, I guess it doesn't rotate. Maybe that's specific to this. You may have it switched off. Oh, I do have, I always switch it off because it drives me crazy. Rotation locked. Um, so I have to say, the, 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 in my opinion, I think it may just be app specific. In my opinion, the, the, ta ta the tablet issue uh, is is no longer an Android. So if you don't have a major yes. app advantage on iPad, you've got features on this that the that Apple does not give you and may not give you this year, and it's two hundred twenty nine bucks. It's hundred bucks less. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, a, it's a strong argument. Why would you buy an iPad? Well, you buy an iPad if you're bought into the Apple system and you like the Apple shop and so on. And that's, that's the problem is that's the only reason now. Yeah. I, I the, the other reason, I, I, I've said this before on the show before, but I, but I emphasize it. My boy, is mine dirty. <laughs> um, <laughs> is the seven inches versus eight inches is a big difference to me. The seven inches is a huge benefit. It's, it fits in the hand. It fits in the pocket. Uh, this is the well, right size. I'm comparing this directly to the iPad mini. Yeah. So the iPad mini, same size, it's a little different aspect ratio. It's a little bit lighter, a little bit thinner. It's in the same ballpark uh, right. as the new Nexus 7. Um, but it's more expensive, and it's not Retina. And I have to say, 
uh, you know, Apple, it seems everybody said, oh, you just can't do retina and get the same battery life or keep the cost down. Well, I think Google's just said, yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. Three, I think it's, what is it, 330 DPI on this? I don't know. Yeah, maybe the iPad screen's a little bit bigger. I don't know. It's well, it's it's physically bigger, but it has fewer pixels. And so it's had it has the iPad Mini has fewer pixels than the. Right. It's ten twenty four by seven sixty eight. It's terrible. It's it's not even ten eighty p. Yeah. It's not even um seven twenty p. No. Um, whereas you know this, more pixels is better, and this is this is going to be. I nice. guess it is seven twenty, but it's not ten eighty. Ten twenty four by seven sixty eight, right? Yeah, but that but that but it should be twelve eighty. Oh yeah, because it's not wide. You're right. It's four three. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. I don't know. I just um, I think that if you're looking, if you're in the market for seven inch, and you and and uh, you want Retina, it's just it's just a no brainer. It, a year ago, you couldn't say that because the apps maybe yeah. weren't there and so forth. But I think you can say it now. Yeah, but, you I know, use Apple will be launching something in a couple of months. We know that. Well, but what the rumors are, and this will be interesting, that there is no Mini this year. That they aren't going to update the Mini. So that's Whoa. what that's what will be interesting. I think they're going to have to do a Mini. But, you know, if it's not in the pipeline, it's not in the pipeline. And, then, and their Mini has sold really well. The iPad Mini has been really Right. There's no, there's no issue. There's no pressure. <laughs> because, so. but, which is a form factor thing. This form factor is a really good, is a really good size. You know, yeah, I like we, 7. We, um, Amazon showed that with a Kindle. Yeah. We had it with a Nook. It's, it's, it makes yeah. sense. It's a, it's a, it's a, you can actually hold it in one hand on public transit, yes. which you can't do yes. with a, right. um, an iPad. No, and I think you'll remember when I first got this Nexus 7, it was a revelation to me. I said, this is the right size. Yeah. Many, many agree, well, see, actually, that Apple may be starting to think that the Mini is its future form factor going forward. Which, of course, Charles made fun of. Uh, Kevin, you're absolutely right. When I see people now on the subway holding an iPad, it looks so big and horsey. It does, what do you doesn't it? a big, silly yeah. thing for <laughs> What <now>? is that thing? <laughs> <laughs> but also, you can't, you can't hold on to the post on the iPad. You're like, <laughs> right. Um, the new Nexus 7 is a little thinner, right? They took they, they cut some of the bezel yeah, on the, the sides. Yeah, better. Yeah. Yes. It's got cameras front and back too, which, which five uh, megapixels. It's not a huge camera, but five megapixels is pretty good. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. all the got iPad has. Dual speakers, yeah. wireless charging, dual speakers. It has and, Qi. Does it have wireless charging? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's interesting. And it's two twenty nine for the sixteen gig Wi Fi version, two sixty nine for thirty two gigs. That's a pretty good price for thirty two gigs. It is. It's got stereo speakers on the back. It's got they call it Fraunhofer surround sound. I always laugh the when back. they okay. when they make a big deal about the Dolby surround or Fraunhofer surround and these little cheesy speakers. But <laughs> uh, my I, problem is I want the LTE, and I gotta wait. Yeah. And it's running a new version of Jelly Bean. And we're Four, not. three. Still, we all, I'm still waiting for that update. <laughs> uh, four, three. What do you want to talk about? The one thing I saw with four, three in an unboxing is that if you uh, go to the uh, about page and tap four, three a bunch of times, you get a Jelly Bean game. That's cool. Oh, yeah. Isn't that that's in? Isn't that is that in this? Yeah, that's in. That's oh, in I never saw yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah, I had never seen it either. I just discovered it a couple oh, weeks ago. Oh, wait a minute. Ago. Oh, wow. You're kidding. <laughs> okay, so I, I tapped the Android version a bunch of times. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Son of a bit. Uh, gun. And then, and then tap, tap the bean. Click and hold. Oh, click. Yeah, okay, tap and hold. So yeah, you yeah. all knew this and you didn't tell me? <laughs> I just found out a couple weeks ago. Bean cleaner. Too, yeah, there you go. <laughs> How could nobody have... T so, I see, I thought that was a new feature of 4.3. So, that's not new in 4.3. What is new in 4.3? <laughs> Restricted profiles. I, I, You know, I thought this was especially valuable for education. Obviously, anybody yeah. with a kid's going to want this because you can keep your kid from buying stuff and seeing stuff you don't want them to see. But for education, having multiple users on a single inexpensive tablet makes these also very compelling. Yeah, yeah, the restricted profiles, it was interesting. I, I'm actually not sure, and I should look into the Android API a little bit, if you have to tailor your app and say, uh, uh, you know, and add the, that permission logic into your app. It, right. it, it seems like maybe, I mean, the example that they gave is uh, if you have a restricted profile for your kid and, you know, you buy your kid a game and there's all these in-app purchases and you buy your kid, you know, a couple of levels. When your kid logs on, he only sees the levels that you purchased That's and not gotta, the other ones. That's right? got to require programming on the game, right? I, I mean, because in order to find out, you've got to be logged in with a player account. So, 
they're, they're basically just blocking the player count for those things. Well, you could, I mean, the, 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 the least they would do is say, hey, you can't, you see those levels, you can't get them. Yeah. Right. But to, right, to but change the UI would require the game having some logic. Yeah, no, it probably wouldn't change the UI, but you would just find the button doesn't work, right? I right. didn't actually watch the demo. So at least but, the button won't work. Well, but the, well, even better, what doesn't even show those, the kid doesn't right. know they exist. So the kid doesn't know, right? Because you, your kid's going to come to you and say, hey, can you buy me this level, right? The fact that it didn't show it at well, that's, all. That's fair enough. You know, I mean, yeah. the, I don't mind that so much as the, the kid... Um, Buying you know, stuff. <laughs> doing purchases with your account, you're like, what just happened? Also, yeah. I, I do feel like there's an education... What just happened? It's like a month later, it's like... Why have I just been billed four hundred dollars by Google? Yeah, oh yeah. I totally had that happen to me with with, with iOS. Did you? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. iOS it was in, it was notorious. In fact, Apple had to do a had a class action lawsuit and had to give people settlements based on that. Yeah, no, I just got that in the mail. Yeah, you get what five bucks or something. Yes, yeah, like <laughs> yeah, thank you. Part of this really version includes new boy. NSA based security. What? Yes. No, that, that's a good thing. People say. What is it? Oh, now i got to find it. NSA. All right, while well, you're NSA, looking, uh, there's definitely an education push for this. They, they mentioned all the textbook partners that are offering textbooks uh, for Android. We know Chrome OS is very popular in schools. I think that's a good one-two punch that uh, an Android tablet is right in some cases. If you have multiple logins, one classroom could share several tablets. Uh, textbooks make more sense on a touch screen, I think, than they do on a Chromebook. Uh, it also solves a problem that Chromebook has, in my opinion, of uh, writing a paper on your Chromebook and, and wanting to look at sources and stuff. So it's not a windowing environment or not a very well done windowing environment, kind of hard to do. But if you had a tablet and your Chromebook, that makes sense. Your textbook's on here. You're writing your paper on there. Um, I, I think that this is smart. I think Google's making a, a lot of sense on this. Uh, also, 4.3 has lens flare. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is, uh, this is uh, WebGL. <laughs> OpenGL. OpenGL. Uh, they mentioned JJ Abrams. Yeah, yeah, giving that lens flare effect, and then uh, and like the the dirty camera. This is all inside games. I, I don't know that the camera may have been the dirty camera lens may have been part of it before, but the lens flare effect was kind of interesting. And new shadows on faces just making more realistic characters and games. Um, I just I just thought it was funny that that they were calling it the the JJ Abrams, <laughs> style Abrams lens flare. Effect. I love it. <laughs> I just put it in the rundown chat, Leo. Okay. Now all I have to do is look at the rundown. Am I? Um, <laughs> Business I Week. Security Enhanced NSA. Android NSA Edition. This is intriguing. Maybe a better write-up, but that's the one I found. Um, Mark Millian. No, Mark Millian knows his stuff. Tech giants listed as part of the National Security Agency's prying, spying program, although prying program is probably also appropriate. PRISM have gone to some lengths to convince the world they aren't in bed with the government. Yeah, skip, skip those first Skip, skip, sentences. skip. Through its open source Android project, Google has agreed to incorporate code first developed by the NSA in 2011, <laughs> known as Security Enhancements for Android, isolates apps to prevent hackers and marketers from gaining access to personal corporate data stored on a device. I think people don't know this, but the NSA has a very good page, number of pages, on how to secure your stuff. Really good security advice for Windows and Mac users and so forth at the NSA page. And I guess they also uh, offered some code to Google. Uh, all new phones, tablets, televisions, cars, and other devices that rely on Android will include NSA code. And this doesn't the have the Amnesty same meaning guy. it used to have. I know. The Amnesty it's, Tech well, guy is a difference very good, between very include NSA, NSA code so and good. NSA contributes to your open source project. I right. Think. Yeah. The, so this is open source code. Yeah. Yes, that's why it's good. Seemed to be okay. Yeah. So you can review the code so you can know what it's doing. And this is good. They, they've decided to... Uh, one of the ways to promote security, uh, U.S. security, na our national security, is to make sure people aren't getting hacked. Apple, on the other hand, does not accept source code from any government agencies. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do they know? Uh, excuse me. No, I'm that's a statement from Apple. Aren't, co aren't <laughs> contributing to WebKit. <laughs> well, that's Either true. They, they, it doesn't. It should yeah, just be right. some guy, well, right? You know, they, they, Apple they take, takes code only from France because it's only pretty course, enough. You know, so, yeah. Right. It is an open source project. Darwin is an open source project. It does get into the... Uh, Darwin almost, is kind of an open source project. Sort of, sort of open source. But but WebKit is. So I imagine that, you know, they, they may take WebKit contributions of other people too. So, hand wave. I mean, yeah, there's a big difference between government demanding to inject code into your operating system when it's a closed source thing right. and government sending pull requests to you that you can decide to incur. I love that, actually. Yeah, I think it's actually... Yeah, why shouldn't the NSA participate in open source projects? 
But I'm, I'm waiting for the first idiot reporting to say, oh, my God, NSA is now on all your Android phones. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee it. Now, you in your uh, Google Plus post, Jeff, and I took uh, issue with it, says Google, dem you said Google demoted your television set into a second screen, a slave to your phone, tablet, or laptop. I think I said it's a promotion. It means right, you can do that, more yes. with your television set. It doesn't it's, do less. It does more. Well, but... Oh, well, what I guess I'm trying to say is that the TV um, and cable box combo no longer control the world. You control the world from this. Well, but that's been true ever since we have, you know. Yeah, ever since Roku I got did that to too. It, yeah, right? it's certainly a good thing for cord cutters. Absolutely, but it doesn't yeah. it doesn't give cord cutters more capabilities than they had yesterday. Right. Because you know, what, point, what you know, I carry this in my bag so that I can plug my laptop into into TV right. sets when I go to a hotel. Right. Yeah, it's just works. more it's more a convenience thing than it is yeah. a capability thing. I carry lots of rubbish in my bag. So. But I well, yeah, but it, you see, know, it but seems like the the advantage is though that like it's gonna like I think I think Jeff's point, like if everyone has a Chromecast, which why wouldn't you because it's thirty five dollars and it's the web and people content creators like Twit care enough to add the little, you know, send to your Chromecast button, then suddenly there becomes an easy, cheap, standard, portable way to watch the web on your TV. I think this is right. this is the difference between this and Roku or this and Google TV or this or you know yeah. watching Netflix on your right. Xbox or whatever, but, but right? Also, as I say, this, the second order piece of this is you'll be able to watch the web on your web. So you'll be able to watch this on any other place that runs Chrome too. That That's also part of that. That's, it, it's um, explicitly said in the SDK thing, uh, they haven't shipped anything that does that yet, but that's that's gonna that's gonna make sense too. I think this is great. I mean, uh, yeah, I'm I'm all for it, and yeah. it is. It does. It's a lot easier for us as a entity to support this than it is to support a Samsung smart TV. Somebody has to write a dedicated app for a Samsung smart TV that's unique. There uh, it is. And, yeah. and complicated and proprietary. Yeah. Whereas we can add code to our. I think my understanding is we could add code to our web page or to our player that automatically understands this and handles it properly. I yeah. think that's the case. And, of course, our third-party apps uh, can also be updated to do that. Mm -hmm. um, I, yeah, I'm, I love it. I'm excited. I just don't think it really it changes the landscape all that much. It's just a, it's just great. It's $35 <laughs> is a big deal. Well, you really – oh, no, that's where we do disagree then. I think it changes the landscape of the industry potentially. Again, people have declared TV dead before. But Gina's point is exactly right. If at this price, with Google's promotional power, this gets to critical mass – uh, and I want to watch show X and I can't get it this way. I have to go through all that old fashioned stuff, in my cable box or that kind of stuff that potentially changes the business. And, and the TV as the center of things, the TV is just another, that's why I said it's just another slave. Yeah, I can watch this here. I can watch it there. I'll, I'll put the show over there. It's no longer that I have, we all have to go and sit in the same room with the damn box and do the whole thing. You know, and, and cable's been going that way where I can watch stuff from different rooms. Like well, yeah, I mean, you, and if you have a Roku or an Apple TV, you can do that. I mean, I don't have to have a cable. And how many people uh, 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 fewer than Google Reader have yeah. a Roku uh, or many, Apple yeah. TV? Yeah. No. No. I don't think it's. No, no, no. Big. Apple TV. What was the last sales figures for Apple TV? Tens of millions. Was really? Oh yeah. And, and, the, and there also is that promotional power of, you know, my sister, who's not in a tech at all, goes to a web page with streaming video and sees this button that says, watch this on your TV. Yeah. And she's like, what's that? Oh, I could send this to my, how do I, oh, 35 bucks, you know? Oh, you, <laughs> and that's just a good, it, You know, Gina, right? is this button already, on, do you see the button if you don't have the plug-in? That's, I mean, that's a good question. I don't know. If Google was smart, you do. <laughs> Right, yeah, because you want to know exactly. what's that? What's this button? Oh, I can watch this on my TV. How do I do that? Oh, I need this dongle. Okay. Yeah, well, it's certainly it, it's a low friction uh, cost to entry, but you also do need a device. You need a computer. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah so they've saying, so like, the thirteen million Apple TVs have been sold. Five million Roku's. So a total of eighteen million Roku and Apple TV users, and that doesn't include boxy boxes and all the other uh, devices. You know, maybe it's maybe it's fifteen million. I don't think Google's going to sell 15 million of these. Maybe. I, I, I don't know. I mean, it depends. I mean, in the course of, of surfing the web Ooh. using Chrome, you that you you the idea is imprinted upon your brain that you can just send whatever you're watching to your TV. I, I don't know. That's like that's incredible. It's very powerful. I don't think that's the barrier. I think the barrier is it's 
people don't people don't know how to use their stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that's true. You can't. I don't care if it's well, 35 it's, bucks. I have to do what I plug in and where I have to do this. It's the flashing 12 problem. Yeah. I, yeah, I think yeah. that's the barrier. It's not it's not price or functionality. It's just that most people but, just want to turn on the TV and watch Oprah. Right, right, right. But the discoverability, right? Like, no one's going to know about the Roku unless you kind of run into it. The, the, right. the discoverability of, like, what's this button? Hey, can you? I, I could see my brother calling me and be like, hey, what's this watching TV thing? Can you hook this up for me? You know, it, it sounds like. I can't you... see my mom, my kids. I can't see anybody in my family saying that. If they saw the button and pressed the button your and kids? it said, watch this on your TV? Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, they, they, they I, they, you they maybe right. well first TV, of all, my kids would just watch it on the computer. And then yeah. I, they, 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 I mean, you want to talk about deprecation of the television. That's what happened. It's people watch it on their computer. Yeah. You know? They don't care if it's on the TV or not. Yeah, but your kids, but don't your kids hang out in their living room and, and pass around phones and tablets watching YouTube videos? When they do. In, in, in fact, in, uh, Henry was mad when I took out the Google TV. He said, I, well, how can I watch YouTube on the TV now? Exactly. Exactly. It'd be cool if their friends could just flick a YouTube video or whatever to the to the TV and they could kind of watch together. Actually, and become more that may sell it. That may sell it. So he goes over to a kid's house and he says, hey, Dad, they all had this on their phone and they yeah, were just putting their videos up. How can we do that on this TV? I could say, oh, I wish, I I wish you could just text Henry right now and see see if he's seen this. And what he, oh, he this hasn't. This was the Nexus oh, no, Q. No, 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 he hasn't. This was the Nexus Q, right? Like, this was the self, the Nexus Q, True. the social media, you know, uh, not social media. <laughs> I made an alias on his social Apple, playlist. on his Macintosh. I, made an I set up Dropbox and made an alias for him. He said, how do you know all this? <laughs> <laughs> and that's oh, not yeah. uh, in any way a slam on Henry. I think he's completely normal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We assume as geeks that people know all this stuff, and then you go in a house and they go, how do you use a remote? <laughs> Well, no, I, I go to the house of how to use a remote. That's <laughs> that's not a geek thing. That's like remotes are really bad. Remotes, remotes are terrible. Are terrible. <laughs> oh, terrible. <laughs> God. Well, I don't know well, if this is any less complicated than using a remote. But it's a browser. It's a button in a well, browser. Right, no, but, I know. but Leo, as soon as it's built into TVs, which it's going to be, mm -hmm. the more I think about it, Google's going to do deals. This is going to be built in the TV. So there it is. So you have the, you have a Google. Uh, it'll take people to consumers ten TV. years to. Okay, now there. Now I'm going to pull up another stat if I can find it. Of how many people use these smart features in their television? Oh. Um, a sur survey says. <laughs> what do you want to? Right. You want to make a guess? Fewer than half of people want a TV set that comes with apps to stream content. Have connected their TV directly to the internet. They haven't even connected it. I I did it once and looked at this and said, why the hell would I ever do this crap? Right. Yeah, and I plug my I plug the Ethernet into my TV. Is like, well, what did I just gain? I don't see anything. Eighty percent of people do not own a smart. Annoy me with software updates. Smart TV penetration is tiny, uh, and of the four and five people who don't own a smart TV, only a third expressed any interest in buying one. The pain. I, I want a dumb TV. I want my TV to be dumb. I want to plug into it what I want to plug you, into. Yeah, it I don't even want a tuner. I want a monitor. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Basically. I'll tell it what to play. Damn it. <laughs> Is that the wrong attitude? No, I think that's no, the right I mean, attitude. There's a new thing to plug into my TV every couple of years. I'm only right. going to buy a new TV. I'm cheap. No, you're uh, right. Ten, every 10 years, you know. So, and I don't want to look at anybody else's now, crappy app store. what if, okay, uh, remember Skype uh, is being now introduced into every damn product in the world, including TVs. What Except if this starts Chrome. to have, uh, what if this has WebRTC and suddenly you can make video calls? Yeah. Uh, what if it? Uh, what? Do you, what more? What more features it, so do has a camera? Video, Doesn't have a camera or a mic. So. Oh, but this does. Yes. Okay. Oh, well, and my connect. My, my connect phone. I'm holding up right. my phone. And your connect does. Well, that's what Microsoft's putting Skype yeah. into Xbox One yeah. for that reason. That makes that makes a lot of sense. Right. right. Sure. This Grandma changes conferencing Skype's. in offices too. Yeah. Well, that's. I mean, that's. I mean. That's basically already happened in our office because everyone has an iPad and we so we use Apple TV and nobody yeah, plugs anything in right. anymore. So that's that that's the transition has has happened at, at Salesforce where everyone has an iPad because they're doing you know, presentations and things. And the way you you plug it into the into the projector is oh there's an Apple TV in the room and you just find it. Bob McBob poses an interesting point. Uh, he says he's got a USB point port. Are you saying that the USB is only for power? Maybe there's some other stuff going on there. I don't know what else it could be. Mm. Mm. I don't mm. know. A camera? I don't know. 
A camera or mic? Mic? Oh, yeah. Mm, yeah. Potentially. Yeah. Eh, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Mm-hmm. We'll find out. We're going to get one. We're going to take it apart. We're going to put it under the microscope. We're going to get it to reveal all its secrets. We're going to waterboard the damn thing. Okay, Chromecast. <laughs> Wiggly. That's... Oh! Oh! Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Now you're talking. You're right. You put a connect like device with a camera and a microphone, and now I can talk to it. Yeah. Well, there's okay, this too. Cast, play House of Cards. Yeah. That's what I the connect my... does. What's that? Oh, the leap. leap today. So have you played with it? No, I just. Uh, and well, of course, it doesn't work with my Chromebook, so <laughs> I got to go back to my I saw antiquated your Mac. Antiquated Mac. Um, yeah, we got like five of them. They sent us, they got, we got overloaded. Uh, have you played with it? Uh, I played with it on uh, Mac Break Weekly yesterday. I'm told that I uh, I, sh- I showed my lack of ability. Um, uh, maybe because <laughs> there were so many lights in here that it wasn't uh, super functional, but um, it's okay. <laughs> what is that thing? It lets you gesture at your screen. <laughs> oh, gotcha. <laughs> that looks really graceful, Leo. Yeah, maybe that's my problem. <laughs> All you I, need to do is wear your Google Glass while doing that. I was a dancer in an earlier life, and I'm too graceful. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, I mean, there, there is so that's a, there is a valuable thing, which is the old classic Media Lab thing of put that there, where if you can actually see what you're pointing exactly. at, then you can say, you know, put that there um, and, and move the thing from yeah, this device to report. that TV. Yeah. Yeah. And that... All right, let's... Uh, that's part of what... Go ahead. Pick some stories. Oh. Any stories? Yeah, there's some stories. Oh, yes. I don't know if we want to... The guy who brings a... guy. Okay, this is a joke. Guy brings a Google Glass into a strip club. <laughs> What's and, the punchline? The, ba- the bouncer says, that's cool. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. Enjoy. <laughs> Enjoy our lovely ladies and there's our a fine video, there's a video overpriced on, beverages. Or not. Really? He took a video? There's video on there. Well, not of the no, no, of the of the of the bouncer. Oh, of the bouncer. <laughs> oh, saying okay, come on in. I think so. I didn't watch it. I just saw the text. get him I off. Man minute. gets in a strip club wearing Google Glass. Doesn't that guy look like a bouncer though? Isn't that great? Hey, what do you want? He fascinates the doorman with his device so much he's allowed into a New York strip club wearing it. He glamoured the guy. That's all very silly. Does it say what club? Not that I know any of them. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Quick caveat. Good. How much is it? Is it free to get in? Four nine. All right. Great. Thank you. What, what is this? What do you? What about? Google Glass. Really? Oh, it's yeah. You what? Uh, like a, a computer? Yeah, it's a computer. How much you pay for that? Uh, right now, fifteen hundred, because it's like a special program. He's actually, he's a reporter, following me around. Yeah. Oh no! Yeah. No. <laughs> So it's like a, pretty much like a laptop. Everything yeah, yeah. Laptop. My email, my text messages, everything. It's connected to my phone, Bluetooth. Oh, it's connected to the front. Yeah, phone. yeah. But you can connect it to Wi-Fi too. You have to be. We're find out this guy's a developer. Win a contest to be able to buy them. Right, right now, fifteen hundred bucks. But it, when it comes out for the for the regular public, it's gonna be it's gonna be like five six hundred bucks. It's pretty expensive, this year, huh? Yeah, no more mm-hmm. than uh, you know, maybe the AT and T will subsidize. It. <laughs> like an iPhone or something. Pretty cool, though. That's cool, right? So oh, you don't have to pick up fucking phone or nothing. No, nope, everything's right there. Hello. <laughs> yep. well, you, also, you can watch movies. Yeah, you, you, you can, I, I don't know about movies, but oh, you can... What's that kind of phone? This thing? Right here in front. That's that. Oh, that's a camera. So you can you can re- do uh, video video uh, chatting and stuff like that. Take pictures. Yeah. So they see it from your eyes. Yeah. From, from what you see. What do you think? It's pretty cool. That's good, man. Thanks, man. It's good, man. Go in there. <laughs> <laughs> he has no. The guy doesn't speak English. I don't think. Leo, he... Leo, I just had a terrible flash of Scoble getting a lap dance. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. <laughs> 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 Mm. Hey. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's hilarious. The guy's like, oh, yeah, cool, man. Yeah, Enjoy your night. Just like, shows <laughs> you the high security environment that a New York strip club is. He's like, oh, you must have a lot of money to spend on the girls. Come on <laughs> That's in. That's right. Would you like to visit our champagne room? <laughs> <laughs> Come on back. Ugh. <laughs> Oh. oh, are we going to see Nexus 10, a new Nexus 10 now that we've seen, got a new Nexus I 7? I wondered that. Oh, that's 
that's a good question. I wonder how well it sells. It looks horsey. Yeah, horsey. It's horsey. Horsey. Wouldn't it be amazing if Google goes primarily to the 7-inch and Apple goes primarily to the 10-inch? I think everybody's going 7. Let me check my updates, see if 4.3 is out yet. Nope. No, I'm not either. <laughs> we haven't even mentioned Google's second quarter results. Uh, $14.1 billion in revenue, net income in a quarter in three months of $3.2 billion. They missed estimates. They missed estimates. And the with all the announcements today, hold on here, where is it? By the way, just Google to show stock, you how, yeah, Google stock's down. Down 10 cents, and Apple stock is up 5%. Because Apple exceeded estimates. It has nothing to do no. with anything except that. No. They're friggin' <laughs> estimates. How did you do compared to the estimate? I don't understand it myself, but that's why I don't buy stock. Um, I'm not going to talk about the Moto X once again. Because you can. <laughs> <laughs> once again, I will say nothing. But we're going to, but this is the last time I don't have to say anything because. Ah. No, that's oh, not that true. Was... No, that's not true. No, I'm sorry because. Uh, oh, it's it's August Thursday? 1st is a Thursday. Oh, so oh, I got speaking one... of which. I yeah. tried to. I, I I sent Guy Kawasaki, who you think is Mr. Mr. Google Plus, a message on Google Plus. Never got a response to see whether I can get an invite to the New York event. Oh, that's right, because the availing's in New York. Oh, yeah, you should, you should be there, Jeff. Uh, let me let me send a, fr a note to my friend Guy. <laughs> see if I could get you in there. Yeah, we got to get twigs. Will you wear Google Glass? Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> How much that cost you? Uh, what time? We don't know what time, and it's a Thursday, so. Okay. Are you going to be in New York? Dang. Uh, no, no, I was just wondering, like, if it, yeah, I, I may not be, be around able to the family thing. Sadly, but, I won't. If I do. All right, here's the headline I love. I'll CC you there. Uh, oh, thank you. Mr. Jeffrey. NSA says that it can't search its own email. <laughs> <laughs> Only ours. That's under other. Uh, <laughs> wait a minute, what? Wait, wait, was this the onion? What's <laughs> wait, wait, no, what? These were, these were FOIA requests, and they asked for, for searches of email, and, and NSA said, oh, we, oh, we don't have, have that capability. <laughs> we have to go to the NSA to have it searched the NSA. We saved it all into our AOL uh, file cabinet, and uh, <laughs> we cannot search it now. That's just bizarre. Isn't yeah. it? They have no I don't sense understand. of irony. There's no central method to search an email this time with the way our records are set up, unfortunately. Oh, that's intentional. Actually, I would guess that that yeah. is, that's, you know, if you can't do it, you can't uh, can't respond to your FOIA request. Like, mm -hmm. I don't have the capability. So they intentionally you know, they flipped the switch. You saw, we talked about it on security now, the, uh, the memo that went out to all uh, Department of Homeland Security uh, staffers. Did you see that? It said, yep. the Washington Post has published a top secret slide on its website for the PRISM slide. This is the one that they published, the new slide that nobody would seen last week, I guess. Whatever you do, do not click on that link because if you do, you will have upgraded the security clearance of your computer and you'll have to report it and you could get in trouble. So even though this has been published by the Washington Post and is, is everybody has seen it now, it's still top secret. And so by looking at it on your computer... You would be triggering a whole thing. You don't want to know. It's a mess. So don't. That's because weird technology. You, <laughs> because the computer would automatically detect that that's content detect that was marked top image? secret? Uh, no, of course not. But you no, just, it, just the, you just have to tell them because you did it. It's a protocol. Oh, it's not a... It's just nonsense. Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> oh I thought there was some Bureaucracy. kind of crazy invisible layer of technology yeah, that was I like good too. pixel matching for top secret classified documents. I mean, how would they know? Whoa. Well, it does say do it does say top secret on it. You know the way this was written. I should it, it, Bruce Schneier um, had this on his uh, blog. Let me let me see if I can read it to you, and you you tell me. Uh, the, Schneier on security is at s c h n e i e r e r yes. dot com. Let me scroll down to that Bruce story. Oh, he's wonderful. I love him, yeah. and he's been all over this. Oh, like it's too late in the. Too far down, I guess. Oh, here it is. Uh, sent Thursday, July 11th, 2013. I have been advised that this article is on the Washington Post website today and has a clickable link titled The NSA Slide You've Never Seen That Must Not Be Opened. 
This link opens up a classified document which will raise the classification level of your unclassified workstation to the classification of the slide, which is reported to be top secret. This has been verified by our mission partner and the reason for this email. If you opened on your home or work computer, you are obligated to report this to the SSO as your computer could then be considered a classified workstation. <laughs> Honor system. Honor system. Let's report it. And you could be subject to administrative or legal action from the government. It's a threat to your systems. Your tax dollars at work. Oh, unbelievable. It's <laughs> unbelievable. Uh, okay, so there's all our stories. Fi Verizon Fi Fios rolls out a 500 mega megabit tier. Tom, you're getting the 500 megabit, right? Half the speed of Google and four times the price. Two hundred ninety-nine dollars a month for this. Are we paying for it, Tom? <laughs> yeah, apparently we are. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? You'll enjoy it. Uh, <laughs> no, we should pay for it. We're using it. We'll pay for the amount that we use. Just send us a bill. And uh, David Cameron has announced in the, the UK that uh, everybody in England's gonna gonna be uh, banned from porn. You have to opt into porn. Now, talk about a privacy violation from government. Uh, on, you have on, to identify uh, yourself as a porn user. Yeah, this by the end of the month, he says all the major ISPs in Britain are going to be filtering your feed for porn, and uh, if you want it, you have to say so. They're going to give you a little switch. Uh, you, but the default is no porn. Isn't well, that that's, that's what the argument's about. So what they, um, what they have previously done is what they called active choice, which means you've got to say, filter me or don't filter me on sign up. Um, and now the government is arguing that the filter me checkbox should be checked by default. So if um, you do nothing, you will see no porn. there's a whole porn. bunch of other nonsense wrapped up in this as well. This is, this yes, is much. The funny thing is that the... Mail. The, the home safe porn filtering system that one of the ISPs in Britain uses is, is made by China's Huawei, <laughs> yes. which, is, which is owned by the Chinese military. <laughs> but they know their porn. They know it when they no, see it. The, That's right. No, my, my, my colleagues at the Open Rights Group in the UK have been um, very strong on this and you know, all over the media explaining why this is stupid, but it's still a challenge. And... I think a lot of it is actually just, you know, there was a leaked um, letter from the um, Prime Minister's office to the ISP saying, we're going to make this announcement, but you don't have to change anything, but we're going to, we're going to say that this is, this is a new policy and, and that's okay, right? Um, and that somebody leaked that like two days before the speech. Because they're, they're basically trying to, to um, you know, get um, the Daily Mail to pat on the back and um, get the... Because um, the Daily Mail started a campaign to do this. Right, exactly. Right. <laughs> I think it's mostly because they don't well, want people to see I'm, page I'm three of the sun. Well, no, he, he, Speaking he, of the sun. Someone asked him that he said, no, but the, the page three of the sun is still fine. It's like... What? You know, there, are, there, are, there are good breasts and bad breasts. You've got you to decide which ones are good. <laughs> Wait it's a minute. very strange. David Cameron said, I will never support a ban on topless images on page three of the sun. Yep. I, I will never... I cannot support that. So that, you know, and there's a, there's a lot of stupid conflating going on here. So there's there's some structural stuff that they that you know, tracking down images of, of child pornography and prosecuting people who create them and all that that is going on um, has been going on for a while. And all the all the internet companies um, cooperate with um, Interpol and people on that. Um, that is being conflated with blocking um, children from seeing pornography. Right. right. Um, and they bounce back and forth when they're talking about it and make it very, very confusing. Um, and this is, you know, one is, uh, this is evidence of a crime scene, and then the other is, these, this is adults um, behaving in consenting ways, and can you, you know, limit people's access to that? And I said, yeah, that's, that's much harder. And then the third one is, oh, and then we want to um, turn on filtering by default on the internet so that children don't accidentally stumble across things, which is, um, you know, there's, there's a sort of mythical piece of that. But it, it, they're Wait, all Kevin, being like tied up in a in a incoherent knot by the the media. Did you follow? And this is going way off our topic, but that's what we do. Louise Mensch, a former MP yes. who moved to New York, I, I I caught one part of a Twitter conversation where she went 
I, 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 I could be wrong and don't sue me, Ms. Mensch, but it seemed to be saying that you can't eliminate rape from the net because it's a common fantasy of women. It was, it was, ah! So, well, the, what, so there was, there was a, part of this was saying already, um, um, you know, child abuse photographs is, um, are, are banned because they're crimes. Um, we should ban video of, of actual video of rape from the net. And that's, that's, you know, that's fair enough. That's also it, um, evidence of a crime. If, if that's what's going on, you should use that to prosecute people. It's that, that's, that's reasonable. But then it was, and then there's, and you should ban, ban depictions of rape. Um, and then it gets, then it gets into like dubious territory. Then you're banning, you know, part of the collection fantasy. of the national gallery. The point was then, fantasy. F f right. But, but that's the, you know, um, the argument, I think that this came because there was a rather horrific child abduction, rape, murder that happened in, in the UK. And the judge said, and he was watching these videos on the internet that inspired him to do this, which is oh, that old argument, right? That, that, mm. So that, so then there are a bunch of people in the UK saying, we need to make sure there isn't um, videos that show this, this kind of thing. But then it, you get into the you know, problem of which of these, you know, it, if they are actually children, then it is already illegal. If they're adults pretending to be children, it's legal, but you know, okay, it's kind of sorted, but there's, there's lots of that out there. Um, and you know, the, it, it gets into a very messy conversation very, very quickly. And it's not, you know, no one in, in the UK has been having a very coherent conversation about this. No. Uh, but they are amazing. trying to put on censorship by default. And this has been a problem already with mobile phones in the UK. Mobile phones, um, by default, um, have some kind of filtering on. Because I, I bought a SIM wow. when I went over there and found I couldn't get to Flickr because it, oh. it was filtered out. Jeez. Um, and you have to ring them up and say, can you turn the filter off, please? So yeah, there, there's there is some some you know, structural idiocy there, and it, it needs to be shown up for what it is. But it's but it is very hard because they are using they are conflating, you know, they're using these horrific child rape cases as their hook that they hang the rest of this on. Don't they know the Puritans left England? <laughs> this is why it's so difficult. Uh, as soon as you start censoring, it just yes, becomes yeah. a, a, a mire. Well, and that, that, that happened before. So there was there is the, there is a, a censorship list in the UK that was designed to block um, images of child pornography. There is a blacklist that is that the ISPs um, sign up to use, um, run by the IWP, I think. Um, and last year there was a court case where they were trying to block uh, a pirating site, and they were forced by the, the government to add. The pirate site to that list so they've already done the well you're already blocking the porn so you should be able to block the the, the pirate site right uh, thing so that, that that slippery slope has has slipped yes <laughs> slippery slope has slipped it's slumped <laughs> yeah. it's, it's we're all sliding downhill now let us so, uh, let us wrap things up it's time for gina trapani's tip jeff's number my tool of the week gina Gmail, uh, people who use Gmail's web app, if you don't like the new compose window, which is that kind of that small window that shows up in the bottom right hand corner of your of your screen, uh, you can now expand it and go full screen with it. Uh, you'll see that there are little arrows to expand the uh, the window and it'll, it'll fill your page. And then if you want to keep that your default, that you can set it as your default as well. There's an option there in the bottom right. So uh, for those of us who don't like typing into a tiny little compose window, this is a nice upgrade for uh, for Gmail users i think this is rolling out now i see it in my account very cool full screen compose full screen compose whereas it's it's a an old technology new again <laughs> <laughs> who wants to see all those windows in the background all no, that desktop I don't, listen you can't constrain my emails man i need full screen to, to express myself no distraction no distraction <laughs> jeff do you have a uh a number of the week. All right. Well, I got one, which is Google's going to pay six hundred thousand dollars to provide free Wi-Fi in thirty-one San Francisco parks. And we wow. remember Google was going to try to provide Wi-Fi across the city. They never got a contract. It's a mess. So it's a step in that way. But I say, why San Francisco? Why don't you come to New York? We're nicer. Isn't doesn't uh... they already have one park? In New yeah. Wasn't Washington Square Park have free Wi-Fi? Yeah, we got some. What do we have? Some Bryant Park, Bryant Square Park. Yeah, Bryant Square. yeah, yeah, that's good. And then I, I want to do a shout out. Uh, a friend of many tech folks, Jeff Pulver. Uh, who helped start the VoIP industry, who does the 140 conference and other things. Founded Vonage. A year ago, exactly. 
uh, decided that he wanted to bypass the bypass. He was going to get gastric bypass, and and he reports now he's lost 93 pounds, 10 inches on his waist. He can do one armed push-ups, and he can actually play basketball with his kids. So I just want to give a shout. Jeff, Jeff. one of the nicest guys Aww. on earth, and give him a shout out. Good for Jeff. It's great. Yeah. So everybody, go to congrats. He's got a Jeff. new startup. Yes, he does. What's that about? Is it under VoIP? It's a group. It's some kind of group uh, a company working thing, but I, don't, I think it's still stealthy. It's business, business to business. I think so. Business to business. Um, I don't know what tip I should uh, I should do. I I found a program. I thought this was kind of cool called CPUZ. This is a free program that will give you. I was I was trying to remember what was in the what was the processor in the uh, in the um, Nexus Seven. CPUZ is a very handy little uh, app that uh, we've had on PCs for ages, but will tell you all sorts of internal stuff about your hardware, iPhone, I'm sorry, Android phone or uh, Android tablet, manufacturer, motherboard, uh, display and hardware IDs, Android version, but also uh, information, oops, it crashed, information about battery life, uh, screen resolution, DPI. It's a, it's a very handy little program, and it's free CPU dash uh, z and uh you can even see a uh, processor which processors are working i kind of like this the sensors thing and it's really cool the sensors I, I don't know how well you can see this on a galaxy s4 but remember the galaxy s4 has all sorts of weird sensors you can see the sensors respond <sighs> what did i do did it crash it went dark you can see the sensors respond you can see it here too as we move things around and so forth i guess this is a little bit of a crashy it's funny because I've been using it for a while and haven't had any crashes. Um, but the Galaxy S4 has humidity sensors. It has the weirdest set of sensors ever. So I can see, for instance, that it's 549 lux of light in here, that the relative humidity is 33.8%. Wow. It's 25.5 degrees centigrade. As I rotate things, it shows you the real-time rotation. Um, the magnetic field, we are, uh, it's 37.2 micro T's, whatever <laughs> that is. Isn't that what, look at all the sensors on this thing. The NSA thanks you. Yeah. <laughs> this is all stuff, frankly, they could be gathering. They could know that it's 39.5% relative humidity in my armpit today. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so just in case you want to know what they know here's all that information all right well well you you, you tie that into chromecast and it's going to uh, uh, target the ads and give you a, a deodorant ad <laughs> there you go on the tv oh your there humidity is very high leo yes 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 cpu load uh you can see how each core is operating it's actually kind of fun because you can see the clock speeds go up and down as the uh, cpu responds to Demand and then down clocks down and all these all these ARM CPUs are responsive to the amount of uh, work that they have to do. Sometimes they even shut themselves off. CPU Z, it's free. Uh, all right, all right. I've got I've got one. Yes, Jeff. Oh, Mark, Jeff, Kevin, Marks. Yes, go ahead. So my tip is a very simple one. There's a site called defundthensa.com. Yes. There's a vote today um, that's amending the defense appropriations bill to remove the funding for the NSA to collect telephone call records under the Patriot Act. It would just be the phone records, but hey, that's a start. Yes. Well, no, not just the phone records, but all the stuff, they, they're like their giant fishing expedition, expedition stuff. No, I right. thought it was just the phone, wasn't it? Yeah, because he's not defunding the NSA, which, by the way, has a massive uh, top-secret budget. Like budget, yeah. Uh, but this, I think this is sunset. It's one of the, it's only sunsetting the domestic yeah. phone surveillance. I don't know what it is. But yeah, go go defund the NSA. So basically, what you need to do is go there, put in your zip code, call your congressman, and say, "Please vote against this." And you've got to do it on the phone. No emails, no no twitters. No emails, no twitters. Friends, we thank you so much for joining us. A fun day today. I hope you watched our live coverage of the Google event. If you missed it or the event, you can uh, find that at twit.tv/specials. It's special number one sixty three. Tom Merritt, Sarah Lane, Ayaz Akhtar, and me talking uh, alongside Sundar Pichai and Hugo Barra and all the gang. Thank you, Kevin Marks, for being here today. We appreciate that. Kevin's at uh, salesforce.com. Anything you want to plug? Tomovision.tv? Um, nothing Anything? comes to mind at the moment. No. All right. You're just doing this for the good, just for the I'm, goodwill. I'm doing this for the interesting, generous act. He's a nice guy. 
Uh, and speaking of nice guys, Jeff Jarvis also. Wonderful to have you. Follow him at buzzmachine.com. Read his uh, blog post about uh, what he thinks the Chromecast means uh, at buzzmachine.com. And, of course, his books, so many good ones, including Public Parts, because he lives in public. Gina Trapani lives with her head under a rock. No. <laughs> <laughs> wow. She's, she's wearing glass. So she may not be in public, but you are. <laughs> a beautiful picture of, Emma, of Etta uh, the other day looking straight at you. Oh, Was that you. glass? It must have been glass. Yeah, yep. yeah, 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 yeah. I have to plug all about Android. Uh, Tuesday nights, we'll be definitely be talking about uh, 4.3 and uh, the updates once we all get them. I don't know when I'm going to, my HTC One's going to get get the update, so that'll be exciting, but that's Tuesday nights. They did say that Google edition HTC Ones and Galaxy S4s would get 4.3 soon. Very soon. Yeah, that's good That's good news for people who are a little bit worried There's, that uh, yeah. the manufacturers might hold it up. There was a variant there, so... Very soon, not just soon. Very soon, not just soon. Not in I, weeks. I'm glad that I have a, not in weeks. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm. I'm glad I have the Nexus Sevens that I'll be able to see it sooner rather than later. Right. It would drive me a little crazy. I might even break out the the crack screen Galaxy Nexus and see if I get it there. Uh, but yeah, we'll see what very soon means. Hmm. You can find her at smarterware.org, ThinkUp app, or ThinkUp.com, and of course, to do, yeah. to do text .com. And yes, every Tuesday, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern time for All About Android. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Twig is Wednesdays, 1 p.m., 4 p.m. Eastern, uh, 2100 UTC on twit.tv. Please stop by live. We can uh, see you in the chat room and uh, include your, incorporate your comments into the show. But if not, on-demand audio and video always available after the fact at twit.tv slash twig or wherever podcasts are aggregated and stored for your benefit. Did you see the uh, Chipotle uh, tweet uh, storm yesterday? <laughs> yeah. What no. the heck? What <laughs> happened? Should I ask? Yes. Uh, oh. All right, let me find it because, uh, of the course, I'm sure it's hacked. all been deleted. Uh, they say their account was hacked. It doesn't sound like it was hacked. So the first tweet was just found it. <laughs> and then, oh, wait a minute. I guess I'm doing this backwards. So let's start with the first one. The first one was Twitter. Then Twitter friends search bar. Then do I have a tweet? Then Twitter find avocado store and ARV. Then hit send too soon. Then it said find avocado store in Arvada, Colorado. And then found it. <laughs> and then Chipotle tweets. Uh, actually, this was media Mediaite who, uh, who said Chipotle tweets has been hacked apparently by a stoner who really wants an avocado. I... <laughs> I, 13 password leave. <laughs> it's just like funny. That's it's the funny. funniest one. Um, it looks like a, a dem demo gone terribly wrong. Mittens 13 password leave. Yeah, but that didn't work. That didn't. Uh... It's yeah. It's very strange. I don't know what's. Is that a attempt to get attention? Two hundred thirty thousand followers. Here's yeah, what I'm I mean, thinking. Give them credit for keeping them all up and just saying, hey, sorry, we had a little problem with our account. I think they're using some sort of social media tool, you know, a Hootsuite type tool. And Well, you can see it from the posts, couldn't you? Yeah, and somebody somebody was typing and they were in the wrong window. And they weren't uh, getting the res results they wanted. They were, they were doing uh, SMS with their wife. Mittens 13 password leave is the funniest one, if you ask me. I don't know. What, maybe not. Maybe it was a, a publicity stunt. It's a strange publicity stunt. It is. Well, it advertises cluelessness more than anything. That's what I think. I don't think you do this on purpose. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I should have done this as a number of the week. I, there, there was a calculation of how many different, uh, it's like 300,000 different ways you can order a burrito. <laughs> I, I lost it, though. So. <laughs> no, that's all right. You can keep it. It, it would have been. Uh... Huh. Hi, sweetie. Can you pick up some lime, salt, and onions? Twitter. <laughs> That's it's just it's just weird. You know what? Horse horse ebooks got a hold of it, and it's just yeah. not been the same ever since. It's some sort of strange. Uh, people are saying it's their twentieth anniversary, but I don't. You know, I don't think this is the way you would want to gain attention. It makes you sound it, it, strange. Maybe Anthony Weiner is looking for a job. <laughs> Mashable has an interview. Has with, he pulled uh, out yet? No. Well, <laughs> bad wording. Uh, <laughs> has he pulled one out? <laughs> I couldn't resist. Oh, <laughs> <Kevin>. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> Sorry, Gina. You hang out with boys. Oh, oh boys. I, you I know, know, I literally for, have been holding on to that for two hours. <laughs> and, his, and his fake name was has, was less suggestive. Than Carlos his name, Danger. So. Now we can create our own Carlos Danger names. You know, there's a Carlos Danger name generator. Is there a Carlos Danger Twitter account? I haven't looked. Well, it's not anymore. I'm sure they've they've taken no, somebody, it down. Somebody, somebody, somebody must have must started a new one. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, Slate Magazine had the story. Uh, let me see if I can find the link to the name generator. Maybe it's a maybe it's well. Here we go. Uh, let's see. First name Gina. Last name <laughs> Trapani. <laughs> Let's see what her uh, Carlos Danger. You should be Alfonso Dynamite. <laughs> All right, I'll take that. I'm dynamite. <laughs> uh, uh, Jeff Jarvis, you should be Victor Clandestine. Oh, ooh, I like that. Let's George, try. George Takei was on a rerun of Howard Stern uh, yesterday, and he said that he, he used to have a nom de gay. He called it in the uh, bathhouses. Oh wow! Oh my! Yeah. Oh my. It was Greg. Oh, my. Was it Felipe Stealth? Because that's yours, <laughs> Kevin Marks. <laughs> All right. What's yours? What's yours, Leo? Oh, I, I was waiting for you to ask. Let me enter Leo Laporte into the Anthony Weiner Twitter nom de guerre generator and press get my name, and it's Armando Risk. <laughs> Somebody actually used time to do this. <laughs> That's a sad thing. It doesn't take I mean, you long. You know what? I can't Where find any it? developers for my students. Gina, you could have hacked this out in 10 minutes. Admit it. <laughs> it's a pretty simple, but yeah, no, yeah, it, it does take some time. It, it, it's, oh, it's, you, you know, need... hey, you know, you could watch TV or you can make a name generator, you know? Well, you just need a linked list of names. It's easy. All right. Fabrizio Smash. <laughs> hey, thanks for joining us. I don't know how we got to this loop. Uh, it's your fault. It's my fault. We appreciate it. We'll be back next week. And that's your Google Change Log. Yes. <laughs> the world's change. longest change log.